the most insulting thing that happened to me when I was in France was I sat down at a table for breakfast. It's like this outdoor cafe. But you were standing? I, no, I sit down. <laughs> that was mean. That's See, mean. Yeah, but you meant it was an insulting thing that happened. To you. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, I'm, I'm five foot eight, Ryan. On today's part of my take, we have our good friend Ryan Rossillo in studio, extended interview with him, plus a Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore of everyday activities that should be in the Olympics. We're going to recap hard knocks. We're going to talk about PFT, uh, maybe needing surgery. We have hot seat, cool throne, and it is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. I am so excited for football to finally be back. I actually narrated a hype video for the sports book today that made me even more excited. So get excited for football. Get excited for NFL, college football. Game time is what you want to use when you're going to games this year. I'm most excited for ooh, Iowa, Iowa City. I think that's like week two or three. Uh, I think we will be there. So we're going to be using game time. The biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you would never buy. Download the game time app. Go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download game time. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Thank you to our friends at game time. Download that game time app. Create the login and redeem code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. So thanks to game time. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Game Time, the best place to get tickets. Football is back. Game Time is back. Go check out Game Time right now if you're trying to go to a football game. Today is Wednesday, August 17th, and Hard Knocks Episode 2, the story of Detroit. That was, I think that's what they put on their storyboard when they're like, how are we going to piece this together? Episode 1 was Dan Campbell. Episode 2, Detroit. Great yeah. city. Shout out Detroit, the city of hope. That's what you always have to say about Detroit, is there's mm -hmm. always a lot of hope there. And I'm hopeful for Detroit. I think Hard Knocks has successfully made me believe in the Detroit Lions. Now, I, I'm going to be probably very wrong about that, as anyone who's ever rooted for the Detroit Lions knows. But I'm at that point where, like, yeah, I can see, I can see the Lions making some noise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, we do let this happen to us every year with Hard yep. Knocks, but... You know, the Lions were scrappy last year when they were supposed to be terrible. Dan Campbell instills something, some kind of emotion in everyone. If you watch him, he has, he literally had a, like a ring of sweat right where it was spit, right where his whistle was resting. Just whistle spit. That's how much he whistles um, in practice. And yeah, I agree with you. And just, just as an aside, like watching the hard knocks with, with the Lions, Honolulu blue doesn't get enough shout outs for being a great shade of blue. Like it's always Carolina yeah. blue. Honolulu blue is electric. It is very cool. And I, this is really hard knocks. They're playing on expert mode now because every year they try to get you to believe in whatever team it is that they're profiling. And if they can get you to believe in the Detroit lions, like even if they just go, if they go nine and eight, that's a super bowl for Detroit. Like wh what a story that would be. And I, I saw the picture that you posted big cat of Dan Campbell and the whistle spit on yes. his stomach. It is, it's very impressive. It, it's like, it looked like a scene from Alien where something was trying to ex escape from his belly. Uh, the only thing I, I was thinking was when they showed John Brown, who, by the way, should be strength and conditioning coach yep. for this team, um, he would suck that spit right out of Dan Campbell's smoke. Oh. In a second, yeah. So John Brown, Ahmad St. Brown's, uh, Ahmad Ra St. Brown's father, uh, also, Equimanius St. Brown's father, who's on the Bears now, uh, is a former Mr. O uh, what Mr. Universe, Mr. Mr. Uh, Universe, Mr. Universe. Mr. It was Universe. a hilarious scene. He still trains his sons. He had not only a moment where he shamed them for drinking water and was like, "What spit doesn't work," yeah. <laughs> and then he just a stray at the man who catches more strays than anyone on earth, Kevin Durant, and was like, "Let me ask you a question, Kevin Durant." He tore his Achilles. When's the last time he did a calf raise? And it was just like, "What are we?" <laughs> I, I thought we had like transported into first take. It was so. No. Perfect. And that guy, 
he just rules. Like, how is he not someone's strength and conditioning coach? Yeah, he's awesome. He he should absolutely be on the payroll. And I love he, he's the kind of guy that has the mindset of you should be able to lift your way out of any problem that you have. Mm-hmm. Oh, your yeah. your, uh, your marriage is on the rocks. You're not training hard enough. Yeah, and and right. he he embodies my number one rule, which is don't fuck with a guy who's wearing a protein branded hat. That's a guy that will absolutely fuck you up. Not only that, he had, um, I think he runs a security company and he also had the double jersey in a very weird way where it was like bears interior and then lions on his shoulders and sleeves. And it was a very cool way to do a double jersey. Cause like, let's be honest, like doing a double jersey, it's hard to pull off. Obviously it's usually family members and the split down the middle is usually not the way to go. He he made it look cool. And maybe that's just because he's a badass. Yeah, they got to get John Brown teamed up with Dale from Detroit Urban Survival Training to be the co-strength and conditioning coaches of the team. I, I Who says no? I think they go 17 and 0 at that point. I'd agree. I'd agree. So so yeah, this episode, um, it, was pr- it was pretty much Detroit, David Blau being a great husband and then fumbling the game away, which I had bet on the Lions in that game. So it was like double whammy. I got to watch that again. Uh, All time backfire of a pump up speech in in the huddle when he's just like, let's go get some first downs and we'll kneel it out and we'll win this game. And then like two seconds later, a a what? That was a what? When he just couldn't catch the ball. And the one thing that was that I noticed like, and I, I love it because they're humans, but like, you know, the whole like next play mentality. That wasn't really the case for David Blau. He was just like, this fucking sucks. I fucking can't believe I did that. Even the guy who dropped the interception was just laying there and was like, I had the game winner. It's like, yeah, you guys like next play, but not really because that sucked. Yeah, it did suck for David Blau because realistically that could get him cut. And that's one of those plays where he's like, he knows what happened right afterwards. It's something so simple that he's done it a million times and he'll do it a million other times. But he knows in that moment, it's like, okay, well, as much as Mark Brunel loves me and he'll probably cry, that probably means that I'm going to have to find a new job somewhere. Yeah. And, and he, I mean, I guess the, the only silver lining is he's definitely in the running for husband of the year, like big wife guy, David Blau, like very supportive. That was actually a very touching yeah. little segment, but that also that someone pointed out on Twitter, cause you know, the R- Rodrigo, the, the middle linebacker from Ohio, Ohio or Oklahoma state was getting a lot of pub and you always have to be wary of anyone who gets like a big storyline in episode one or two, like David Blau, they probably like, you know what? They, they probably sat down with Dan Campbell before and like, who are you thinking about cutting? It's like, Oh, okay. David Blau. All right, let's get, let's get a big story in here about he and his wife. Yeah. Yeah. Their kids are going to be really athletic though. Like yeah. I want to draft their kid first overall dual threat quarterback. There was another guy in this episode named, um, I don't know who it was, but his nickname was Big Smooth. And they brought Big Smooth in to break it down at the end of practice. And they said, all right, Big Smooth, the serpent, the serpent of death. And you're a fucking badass if your nickname has a nickname. The yes. only other person I can think of is Babe Ruth that had a nickname for a nickname. But yeah, whoever the serpent of death is, I love that guy. Well done to you. Um, with Rodrigo, I, I, I want to believe in Rodrigo. It, I do sound, too. it sounds like he's awesome and he's got a cool story behind him. Uh, but sometimes coaches love to use uh, a late drafted rookie or an undrafted rookie almost more to make a point to everybody else that's on the team. Be like, this guy, Rodrigo, he's come to take your job. Like he's, They just use him as, as somebody that scares everybody into yeah. playing better because coach is disappointed that you're not putting as, for, as much effort forward as Rodrigo is. Yeah, it was pretty awkward for him when they just had an entire segment where the coaches were like, no one's ever done anything like this at linebacker in this building in yeah. front of all the other linebackers. And then they he dropped the, the line that I didn't realize Hank Fraley, the offensive line coach, uh, has been there for five years, which credit to him because he went from Patricia to Daryl Bevel to Dan Campbell. Like, that's that's impressive to have that stick to Um And then I, I was like, oh, yeah, like, if you take one look at Hank Fraley, Dan Campbell was in love right away. He's just like, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, I feel like if you're uh, an aggressive physical offensive line coach, then if the rest of your team is really, really bad and you guys have bad records, you can be the one that sticks around because you can't blame anything on the offensive line at that point. Well, it also just comes down to a simple moment where I'm sure the offensive linemen were like told Dan Campbell, like we want Hank Fraley and the offensive linemen are just the biggest dudes in the room. So they usually get what they want. Yeah. He respects mass. Dan Campbell has an excellent power stance throughout this episode as well. His, his feet are always wider than his shoulder width is. 
And he continues to set records for using the word men when he's yes. addressing his team. We, we should do a drinking game. You have, you have to drink your own spit whenever Dan Campbell says men. Yeah. And it's be um, super hydrated by the end. He, yeah, he. I'm trying to think of the other moments he had. He, he's a butt guy. He, he revealed that right away when he was uh, TJ Hawkinson was wearing booty shorts, and he's like, "My wife used to have those." And it's like, okay, <laughs> flashback. Yeah, everything yeah. reminds me of her. He's the. I should. I should text her meme in real life. Oh, I forgot. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson's family. Um, that was a funny moment when, when uh, what, what's uh, what's uh, the Mr. Universe's name? John Brown. John Brown. He was like, yeah, they're probably sitting up in that box up there in that sweet $20 million bonus or whatever. And there's like flashes to them sitting yep. up there uh, freaking out, which uh, of course they would freak out because it's their brother, son. But it was the one moment I loved was Aiden Hutchinson made like, I think he had two tackles to start the drive and his mom is crying, like literally crying. And then you just hear out of the corner of the suite, his dad being like two snaps, two tackles. I'll take it. It's like, yeah, like, like uh, we're, we are like this preseason. I like that was okay, but yeah, like it was, impressed. yeah, it was, it was a very funny moment. And they were, you know, talking about what he should do for his sack dance and all that stuff. I had, a, I brought my notebook out. I'm going pin on paper this season. I'm going to just see how that goes. Try it on, see if it fits. Well, I've been doing it forever. I made a note um, when they showed Aiden Hutchinson's family up there, but I didn't look it up. Are the Jets playing against the Lions this year? Because if so, Zach Wilson is absolutely going to show out in front of his mom. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Backwards way of PFT saying that she's attractive. No, I'm saying that Zach will. She's the kind of girl that Zach Wilson Week 15, would find attractive. Right. Get that, get that, Hank. Yep. Week 15. You got that. You got that, Hank. I think she's he a, was a, a PFT lovely was like lady. crafting, how can I say this without getting the immediate bonk? The delayed no, no, bonk no, is what no, he was going that, for. I'm putting the bonk on on Zach Wilson on that one because I know you know he's at home. He doesn't have anything else to do. He's he's recovering from surgery. He's watching this episode. He's put a big fat circle in week 15. Okay. Would you, uh, Billy, you get your hand raised? <laughs> I would say that Aiden Hutchinson, his sisters shouldn't be referred to as Aiden Hutchinson's sisters, but rather oh. Aiden Hutchinson should be referred to as the brother of Miss Michigan. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. okay. Just, All right. just let's there you just go. give huh? them their flowers. Yes, I like that, Mr. Nice, Michigan in law. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, nice correction there. Um, and then the last note I had was Barry Sanders could still like. I know we joke, but he was looking at the grass, being like, "I could tear this up real quick." Like, For sure. Watch out! I still got some miles left. Yeah, he was looking at the grass like Zach Wilson's looking at Aiden Hutchinson's mom. There it is. Yeah, that's true. And I think that Barry, I think Barry Sanders could actually, he could get like 40 yards in a game, realistically. I think he get more than that. If we're being totally honest, I think that he could get 40 yards behind the, the best offensive line of the league. Maybe not the Lions line. Who, who are the best lines right now? Probably the Browns are pretty good, right? Cowboys. Mm -hmm. I think he could, I think he could get 40 yards in an NFL game. Yeah. I mean, those, the miles that he left on the tire, they don't go away. But They're still to, on the tire. You have to remember, for every yard that he got in the NFL, he probably got like four yards going laterally or backwards. Yeah, that's true. So he that does have true. a lot of a lot of tread. Um, pretty good episode. Not as strong as the first one, but I would say it was a pretty good episode. I mean, I'm still intrigued, still excited. I, I, I also want to just shout out our good friend, Jared Goff. Felt like he was doing a great job on the sidelines, especially pumping up David Blau, even though he totally cost him the game and cost my bet. But again, good husband, so whatever. Um, but yeah, that was nice to see Jared just getting in the mix. You guys also called uh, you called him Tim Kennedy the other day. Yeah. Tom Kennedy, right? Wow. I can't Tom believe Kennedy. we said something or a name wrong. <laughs> you confused me, yeah. You Who's thought we were Tim talking Kennedy? about the MMA guy. I don't know. Yeah. It's an MMA guy that's got takes online. Yeah. What 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 do you got, Billy? You're muted. No, I called him Tim. And I, I think I echoed it. So Billy and I in the wrong. Hey, do you have a list for names we screwed up, Hank? Uh that was let me check. <laughs> Just that one. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Last thing before we get to uh the rest of the show, we have awesome Rosillo in studio hadn't had him in studio in a couple of years um pft you are do you want to your arm like is this is going to be time 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 traveling yeah yeah um well i i went to the doctor today because a couple days ago i was doing a club fitting uh for our good friends over at taylor made and they were 
they're going to hook me up with some sweet clubs, but I, I hit probably like a million golf balls. And on one of my last swings felt like a popper twinge in my elbow. And then my fingers started to go numb. So I asked pro football doc about it. And he said that it might be a UCL thing. So I went to go see a doctor today. I got diagnosed with a, they did an ultrasound on my elbow, which is kind of cool. They put that little gel on and they, they rub the wand back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so I've got, I've got a nerve damage to my ulnar nerve, I think. And it might be a ligament. So we'll wait two weeks. I can't make the flexing motion. So I can't do this at all. Um, I guess Even if you're watching you're on it? YouTube, I'm doing it right now. So, um, that's got to, you got to take like several bonks off the list. If I can't even make my right arm go up and down, but you're that'll, doing that'll, it. That'll, that'll probably make it worse. Well, no, yeah. I'm not supposed I, I can do it, but I'm not supposed to. Oh, okay. You're so going to be, right. be stocked up. You're so basically like ever. you're just, you're in a very religious household now. Yeah. So you, I you mean, can do it, but you're not supposed to. Yeah, exactly. It's Catholicism. I got prescribed <laughs> one Sunday mass and, mm -hmm. um, Basically, what the doctor told me is that I'm so strong, he's never seen anything like that before, that my forearm muscles tore my ligament off my bone, potentially. So we're going to go back in two weeks, see if it's healed. Um, that's a joke. That's obviously not what actually what really happened is I'm so unathletic that I hurt my arm practicing golf. Not even playing golf, but practicing golf. Cut that golf. part. No, I like yeah. the first part. You okay, were, I'm so, listen, I'm you so were, jacked I know up. for a fact that you were about to like break 80, and this is going to stop you. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I had a lot of momentum. I think I broke 130 last time. So, I mean, we're trending in the right direction. If I keep these percentages up, I'll be below 80 in no time. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, it's kind of a bummer, but we're going to move forward. I'm not missing any work, unlike Stephen A. Smith, who took nice. an entire fucking month off with a shoulder surgery. Now, I might have to get surgery Tommy John on this. And I don't know, who the fuck is Tommy John anyways? Do we know? We yeah, need to rename that surgery. He's the pitcher who got the surgery. I think it needs to be renamed. Uh, who else had it? Degrom. Every pitcher. Every it's pitcher. now become the thing that you're supposed to get. It just to, it's like a tune-up. Yeah. So I, they come back throwing faster, right? So my arm's going to come back even stronger. We'll see what happens. If I do have to get surgery, my idea was to go get it from Dr. James Andrews because he does elbows and all that shit. So that would be that would be interesting to have a con consultation with him. But the bottom line is pretty elbow busy guy. What's that? You think he's maybe like booked out? No. Uh, no, he works on professional athletes, Hank, and I am one. But this is going to give me a good opportunity to... In golf? No, uh, I mean, in my own brain, I am. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, you're, so, you're a professional podcaster. That should count. Like, he's he is a doctor of the stars. You are a star. Exactly. Like, doing a podcast more than anyone, I should know the importance of having a solid working right forearm. That's basically all we have. But I, I'm going to be able to. I'm going to be able to move forward. I hope and not need surgery. But we'll go and might get an MRI in a couple of weeks. But it's uh, you know, it's a challenge. But this is this is why we podcast, Big Cat. You you got bit by a dog. You didn't mm -hmm. miss a show. I broke my foot. Didn't miss a show. This is just par for the course. So I'm hurt, not injured. Looking forward to moving forward with this. Um, but if you don't think that I'm going to milk this for all it's worth, you've got another thing coming. And I also in theory, should be able to get workers' comp for this because it happened on the job. I was literally entertaining a client when it happened. That's um, facts. So, All right, so I'm I've, got this, I've got this little brace on right now, which is it's such a little beta brace. It's basically like the strap that you wear in a game in remembrance of somebody. But I have to keep it on. And then at night, I have to wear one that just stabilizes my arm. But, you know, like I'm, I'm talking a lot. I'm not trying to make this about me. I'm trying to be real low profile with it. So um, we're just going to move forward and pretend like I'm fine. Um, all right, so I'm reading right now. Tommy John, he got this. He was the first pitcher to ever get the surgery, um, and the doctor gave him a hundred to one shot of it being successful. And he got the surgery in nineteen. He debuted in 1969. He got the surgery. 1963. He got the surgery in 1974, and he pitched all the way till 1989. So look at that. He I deserves like those it. odds. I, yeah, I, I was. I'm looking at it right now. Like Tommy John kind of deserves the name. The fact that he pitched an entire career after uh, he got the surgery is pretty impressive. I'm just going to call it a PFT tune-up. That's going to be my name for it. So if if I extend my podcasting career by another 30 years after the surgery, then I think I should get the name. 30 is the number that I'm looking for. Okay, because he, so I'm looking right now, John, uh, Tommy John went on to win 164 games after having the surgery, 40 more than before. Okay, so that's pretty, you got to, 
You got to put up numbers. I got to stay on top of the charts. That's all. I, I have no choice. For, so it's, wait, hold on. I'm going to I'm gonna give you the exact year. You got to stay up on top of the charts for 14 more years after the surgery. Okay. I can. That's easy. We will be 51 years old. Oh, fuck that. I'll be dead. <laughs> Oh God! I, we got bad looks from Billy and Hank. Well, Billy was I'll licking his lips. Well, Billy, 40, was, Billy yeah. was licking his lips. Hank looked at us like, "Holy shit! These ancient dinosaurs." I can't wait till we're fifty-one doing this podcast, and still talking about fucking Blair's moms. <laughs> I'll be your age. It's gonna rock, dude. Fucking hey, the like all these ki- all the kids from Hard Knocks today will wait, be. What was that, Billy? What'd you say? In fourteen years, yeah. I will be thirty. Seven, right? Yeah. Well, I don't. You tell us how old you are. We don't know your age. <laughs> I'm 23. Okay. So yeah, in 14 years, I'll be 37. That just made me feel really old. Yeah, that's fucked up. Like when I'm 51, yeah. it's like doing the math with. I'm sure you've done this, big cat, with like your kids when they're going to graduate, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. That makes me feel old. I'm going to be 51, and Billy's going to be my age. Yeah, no, that will be my son. Will be like uh, going into his senior year of high school. He'll be Billy's, in 14 yeah. years. He'll be Billy. We'll yeah, he'll be, be yeah, my son will be Billy. Well, he'll he'll be a little yeah, he'll be Billy. <laughs> Billy, if my son turns out to be you, I'll be very proud of him. I think if because everyone, every kid is can just takes their own path. If if Billy ends up taking our job like he thinks he's going to, then he, he hires your son to be the new Billy, <laughs> and he just constantly suspends him to get back at you. <laughs> <laughs> but like the plot twist is my son's always on time and like a model citizen and he just suspends him for no reason. <laughs> I like it. This yeah. is this is the future, folks. You're looking at it. So let's just hope that PFT all this can be avoided if PFT avoids surgery. Yeah, I'll just say like a lot of people are saying solution. thoughts and prayers to PFT. My rule of thumb is I don't need any more I don't need any more thoughts. Give me your prayers. I've got enough thoughts in my own head. So just pick one, thoughts or prayers. I would prefer prayers. Yeah. Bill, you have a solution before we kick it to our cells back in studio? I have research chemicals that could solve all of this, but PFT is being too soft, actually. Like, oh, no, is that true, listen, PFT? Yeah. Are you being soft? I have no, the any, anytime Billy says, I have research chemicals, my answer is an automatic yes. Mm. But then he started to get too far into it, and he was ordering from a weird place, and they cost a couple hundred bucks. I think Billy just, Billy just likes spending other people's money. So he was just like, can I get your card? Joe like, Rogan what? uses them. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, good enough for me. Kind of have to do it, PFT. Maybe, I, give me a floater of uh, ivermectin on there. I'm going to say, PFT, like, if we want to stay at the top of the charts, I think you got to take the research chemicals. Right, so <laughs> I, I want, real talk, I wanted to take the research chemicals, but then Billy said that he would have to inject them into my elbow. So if I can I'll find do, I will, someone else to inject them, I'll, I will. I'll squirt whatever liquid Billy gives me into my body. I will. I will inject the the chemicals. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Billy, sure. buy the Let's chemicals. I'll give you my card. Get Perfect. the chemicals. I already um, have it. Okay. <laughs> oh, you already have the chemicals. So you. <laughs> so that was a scheme. Wait. So you were trying to give me your old chemicals just so that you could get a new batch for yourself? No, I was actually saying I had Big Cat's card. Oh. Okay. Oh, so okay. he already bought the chemicals. All right. Well, bring the chemicals. I want to see the chemicals. I'll take the chemicals. I will also Fuck take the up. chemicals so that I don't get an injured elbow. Big Cat's going to match. It's preventive, preventive <laughs> energy. Or, uh, uh, fuck, I'm, it's, fuck, Medicine. it's too late. Medicine. There it is. So uh, we have Hot Seat Cool Throne coming up in then like an hour and a half of Rosillo. And uh, we'll see everyone on Friday for our Wednesday reading. Before we get to Hot Seat Cool Throne, a quick word from our friends at Cross Country Mortgage. CCM listens, understands, and communicates throughout the entire loan process. Provide more loan options tailored to your financial capabilities with Cross Country Mortgage. They have innovative technology focused on what's important to fill your loan needs, and there's faster closing time than the competition. They're going to make sure that you have stable monthly payments and low to no down payments. Access to your equity to use for larger expenses from debt consolidation to home renovations. Cross Country Mortgage does it all. Even if you don't have a mortgage right now, you could be looking to get one in the next year or so. Start talking to Cross Country Mortgage. If you do have a mortgage, they can help you out as well. So who doesn't love swag? We got a special offer. Get a free Barstool and Cross Country Mortgage sweatshirt when you sign up to refi or get pre-approval while supplies last. Of course, when you need an outfield assist, Cross Country Mortgage has more than enough arm strength to get you 
uh, to the place you need to have a home. It's the American dream. So see if you qualify today. Visit ccm.com slash barstool now. Cross Country Mortgage LLC, NMLS 3029. All loans subject to underwriting approval. www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Thank you to Cross Country Mortgage. Check them out today. They will make sure you get into a perfect spot to buy a home and have a mortgage. Okay. Hot seat, cool throne. Henry. Hey. hey. Hank, welcome back. Thanks. Hey. Thanks for having me. What would you Happy think of Batgirl's uh, cow? Terrible. Terrible. Oh, it, was, mm. it was not a cow. Shoot it. He just yeah. said the word moo. You've got mm. a nice tan going on right now. Thank you. Yeah, I was enjoying some, some Coors Lights at the beach, mm-hmm. as one does. Yeah. Uh, but my hot seat is Jay Monahan. Oh, okay. PGA yeah. Tour Commissioner. Uh, they're holding an all-hands meeting, uh, all the PGA Can players. Can you explain as, what, as, as a corporate entity, what does all-hands mean? Yeah. Is this a circle back, or is this a put a pin in it? I think this is like a, everyone just says their says their opinion and then they say we're going to circle back and then nothing probably it's really a brainstorm happens. Right. Got but but i think but tiger's tiger, showing up and people yes. but i don't people are acting like that's the biggest deal in the world they're like oh my god uh, tiger's gonna be there i think that is the biggest deal in the world do you do you hear these guys talk about tiger i know they're but, obsessed with him but like what is he gonna do tiger, gonna, tiger could right now say i am taking over the pga tour it is now my tour i am commissioner and there wouldn't even be like a voting process. He could just say that, and everybody would be like, yes, Tiger, you are king of golf. He's probably going to sit in front of everyone and be like, look at me. All you got to do is win like 15 majors, and you'll make a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> like, is that, is that I'm, a perfect, I'm, a, I'm a perfect test case for why the PGA Tour is the best. Like The more I think about it, though, Tiger could be an advocate of the Live Tour because like he, he doesn't like women near his car. Mm-hmm. We know that. That's true. He's had issues in the past. So there's some common ground. Doesn't that he like cars in general. Doesn't like cars in general. Yeah. yeah. No, nobody should drive. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We, maybe Tiger should be on the board of Tesla. Yeah. That would actually be a perfect <laughs> fit. Uh, but yeah, he's going to like Tiger is going to rally the troops. Tiger's going to get everyone and on the same page. That's why I said Jay, the Monahan was on the hot seat. Like, do you think it's going to be rally the troops against Jay? No. I, think, I, no, listen, no, no. I don't know With anything Jay. about Jay With Monahan, Jay. but I do know that but he's I feel like a lot of. I feel like there's saying? a lot of. I feel like a lot of the players have had to talk about the live when they don't want to talk about the live. Like they just want to play golf. They're not doing it. Yeah. But they're. I think they probably do have issues with him because of how of course. he's handled the situation, which but has made them have to handle. I have, Tigers I have a, a perfect, perfect solution. This is what should happen from the very beginning. Jay Monahan made it his business to to kick people off the tour if they played in another organization's event, which is kind of badass that, to be that, like, you're off the tour. Yeah, it is awesome, but he also overplayed his hand. Yeah, of course. and everyone's like, yeah, okay, you know what? You know what's better than than winning the Fortnite challenge is getting $100 million guaranteed. Mm-hmm. So Jay Monahan just needs to be like, listen, I fucked this one up. I'm firing myself, uh, and we're going to put like whatever whatever like hairpiece and glasses that you need to take my position, and we're going to switch it up. And if you play on the Live Tour, you can also play on the PGA Tour. Yeah. That's, that's what is going to happen. And he, it's a classic case of really overplaying your hand and thinking that you had all the leverage in the world when you actually had zero. Yeah, but Tiger's going to ty- – this is good for Jay Moynihan. Tiger is definitely his ace in the hole where he can be like, hey, Tiger's here, let's all – because Tiger's very pro PGA Tour. He turned down $900 million or whatever. So, you know, getting everyone – he's important for this entire P- – just as important as, like, Rory being outspoken. They need They need guys to be like, hey, we're not going. You know, boost everyone up. Yeah, I feel like you're you think this is like in conjunction with the PGA, and yeah, not I, I players think ti- against the PGA, not against them, but no, like I, more frustrated with the current. Yeah, administration. they're probably gonna be like, pay us more, and they're like, we're gonna try to figure out how to pay you. Well, more. And the travel, did you see? Like there was the, all the all the people, all the all the lower tier players that are like trying to make the cut. Like there's the travel where it's like they're going from. Like the travel schedule makes no sense where they yeah. have to go from like mm-hmm. Arizona to like no what the PGA Washington Tour is going to do and then back to California is they're going to put in guaranteed like appearance fee money where if you show up you get paid even if you don't don't make the cut or if you don't you know or like that's really the big thing is that guys are like why wouldn't I go take a hundred million dollars and have it guaranteed versus having to fight and scratch for every single dollar on the PG t- PGA Tour every week. If you're in the top 50 or something like that, they'll guarantee money. Yeah. Have, yeah. have some reward system Appearance in place like fees, that. Yeah. The, the bottom line is they they can't just keep going on and losing people to the Live Tour because that's not sustainable for them. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, and then my cool throne, SOS Cooling and Heating. Yeah. NIL the coldest, deal. The coldest throne. Mm-hmm. 
to coldest throne. That's that's that good, was Billy. Nice. That's, <laughs> that's, Shit. That's, 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 that's why one. it should have been mine. Damn. Should have won first. Um, <laughs> so SOS Cooling and Heating is a cooling and heating company. They did an NIL deal with the coldest Crawford, and it's one of the one of the probably the best NIL deal commercials that's come out yet because it's obviously based around your house being the coldest. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad we called SOS. Our AC is the coldest. I'm always the coldest. SOS to the rescue. Hey, this is Dakota Crawford, raw receiver from Louisiana, now playing at Lincoln. When your AC isn't the coldest, you call SOS heating and cooling. Their takes don't make commissions, so they give you an honest opinion, fair pricing, and longer warranties than a competition guarantee. Take it from the coldest. We will keep you cool this summer. I thought Robert Griffin had a good reaction to it. He said somebody's going to start naming their kid like DeRolls Royce, mm-hmm. just hoping so that when they get to college, they'll get a free Rolls Royce out of it. Not a bad idea. I no. actually... I think DeFerrari. DeLexis yeah. is kind of a good name. <laughs> DeLexis? DeLexis is like a name Dude, that I wouldn't... DeLexis is already pregnant. Yeah. She's not even no, born yet. But DeLexis... <laughs> I like DeLexis. DeLexis. DeLexis has... Three time, three types of hepatitis and two types of herpes. Alexis, <laughs> I'm down for Alexis. Okay, yeah, it's my cool yeah. throne. All right, All right, good job, good job, PFT great ranks. job, great job. Hot seat, cool throne. Uh, my hot seat is Levar Ball because there's a new sports dad in town, Fernando Tatis. Yes, he uh, he responded to his son Fernando Tatis Jr. That's wild. Um, getting suspended for steroids, he said it was a mistake that could have been handled differently. Destroy the image of a player for such a small thing for a situation like this is a catastrophe not just for Tatis Jr., but for all baseball. There's millions of fans that will stop watching baseball. Yeah, millions. So, millions. Millions. I, I, for one, will not watch baseball it, without Fernando Tatis yeah, I mean, Jr. in it. How many people does he think watch the San Diego Padres? Yeah, That's, mil- millions. Let's start there. But he also, he went even more, uh, it, you know, for his son. He's going, he said they're going to start traveling around Dominican Republic talking to young players about what happened, explaining their side, and also... Uh, he said it was due to a bad haircut. So he got. So he says that uh, Tatis Jr. got a bad haircut and then got a fungus from the haircut. Yeah, the ringworm. Yeah, the ringworm and from the haircut. Mm-hmm. And then he had to take the steroid. Uh, that it clearly says that it's a steroid on the front. He's going to take his son on like a worldwide tour, educating people, like raising awareness about ringworm from bad haircuts. Yeah, I'm just saying the steroid he did use is like an old ass steroid. It's kind of like. Oh, it's he, he it's been caught. it's it's been a banned substance since they invented banned substances yeah. in in the MLB in 2003. It's which like, is hilarious in its own right that that's when banned substances actually like came on the scene for MLB. But yeah, it's no, been that's that when long. steroids like a, were invented. Yeah. yeah, but it's like a Cold War steroid. It's like, yeah. a like Russian in the 60s. It's the and stuff it that like the it, East Germans used to. Yeah, used to there's use. like way better stuff. And it that, says it on the box what. This is like, a steroid. This, the do the, not the take banned me. substance is literally on the front of the box. <laughs> this is it's, illegal. Do not take me if you're if you're getting piss tested. Yeah, it's tr- tr- trophy trophy bowl. No, but is that, the na- no, and that's the name of the product. Yeah. But then right underneath it, it says Clostable, which is the b- banned substance, and Neo Messini or whatever. It actually isn't the same. They just sound the same. What? The band, the band substance just sounds like the fungal medicine, but they're not the same at all. Oh, so he was saying that he so, thought that he ordered the fungal medicine and they yeah. accidentally s- sent him steroids. That's a classic yeah. mistake. Yeah. It could, ha- it. could happen to anybody. Got it. Exactly. Yeah. A- and then David Ortiz had a good take on it, too. David Ortiz was like, they uh, they just shouldn't suspend him because he's so good at baseball and he's a face of the game. I'm in for that. Yeah, that's actually, it, that's the, that makes more sense than what his own dad is doing. David Ortiz is right. It's like, if you're awesome at baseball... They should just cover it up. Yeah, they call that the Peyton Manning rule. Yeah, come on. Fernando Tatis should have said, yeah, it went to my wife by mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my cool throne is... That'd be funny if he got... I don't think he's married. That'd be funny if he got married just so that he could say Instead of a green wife. card wedding? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just it's a player's a card. It's a steroids wedding. Uh, my cool throne is NFL Blitz. Yeah, you guys took mine too. You, you guys Fuck, remember NFL took Blitz? Took mine. Well, Hank took one of mine too. Hank took my golf one, so then I had to audible to NFL Blitz. Shit, so now you have to audible. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. And audible. Billy's gonna have to audible I have too. Three audibles right Holy now. Holy shit! Okay. This is a, this is a big mix up. But yeah, NFL Blitz is back. They're they're selling it um, without the late hits though. What? Which is Stop it's fucking it. stupid. Stop isn't it? it. Yeah, it's, that's not, it's basically that's not selling real. porn with no nipples. It's it's the NFL. Their statement on it is so funny. The NFL oh. said. The NFL was warm to the idea because NFL Blitz was loved by fans, uh, b- 
uh, this is this is one of the reps from the the actual arcade game. Uh, but if they're going to re-release three three of sports video games' most memorable arcade adapt adaptations in a new package they had to be cleaned up for modern sensibilities they said oh. guys if you want to do this oh. you've got to address these issues the nfl was like nfl blitz a video game is too violent the nfl told them that yeah so <laughs> i don't know if the nfl knows why people played nfl blitz it's so that you it, could fucking it swing wasn't, them around and smash them into the ground it wasn't for the articles no. on, on this one i'm a big time like go woke go broke guy yeah no one's gonna buy NFL Blitz minus the late hits. That's it's the just, only reason. It's just like a worse Madden. They should. Although Madden's already. It's Tecmo. Did you see yeah. the video by the way of Madden? They were like, uh, uh, it was it was like a meme going around. Those like Madden or or like Madden gamers. We just want you to fix the game and like update some things. And then it says Madden, and it's just a video of showing all the different ways that you can do the gritty for your celebration dance in Madden. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> it's like you can customize it this way, that way. <laughs> I yeah, I, I think that. If anything, they should make a new video game that goes the other way, where you can play with like guns, at, like at guns on the field. Uh -huh. You can play as Deshaun Watson and the last boy and, scout, and you can like nut on somebody's <laughs> face to avoid getting tackled. Like go way, way, way further in the opposite direction. Yeah, people would buy that shit. And Imagine if they had like NFL Michael Vick and his fest. offensive yeah. line was just dogs. dogs yeah, or yeah. are he, are he's running with like dogs on a leash and yeah. they're attacking people. Yeah. Aaron with, Hernandez is a weapon in that game. He is. Literally. Bi week mode and it's just GTA. Yeah. Dude, that's, that, I mean, this that is the kind of game, game that yeah. I would 100 million percent play. Yeah. I think for as good as, as Madden and, and NBA 2K and MLB The Show or whatever, like Blitz, Slugfest, and NBA Street were all better and oh, more yeah. fun games. And the fact that they don't want, like, it's weird that they're just Stupid. like, we don't want kids mm -hmm. to have that al alternate option of like, a fun game of football, a fun game of MLB, where it's like you can just fucking beat each other up at first yeah, base. Yeah, it's the only like, thing that they we wanted. I want yeah. I want to play as Richie Incognito career mode and like tear somebody's <laughs> ar arm off and then eat it like a turkey leg at a state fair yes. on the field. Yes. I want I want the dirtiest possible NFL game and I will play that. It's like they basically were like, hey, here have a part of my cheesesteak, but no no steak. That, like, yeah, what are we ordering? Exactly. For? The impossible. Yeah, if we came out with an impossible part of my cheese. Ugh. Never. I will never do Puke. that. Imagine Puke. playing as Tim Tebow and, like, you see an orphan in the stands and you go up and you circumcise it real quick. Yeah. <laughs> or a guy dying. <laughs> yeah, you, you go save his save life. Him. He's, yeah. about to, he's about to fucking <laughs> go up into heaven and you catch him and yeah. bring him back. Urban Meyer going, yeah. like, career mode on Urban Meyer. Yeah, you basically, Urban Meyer on the sideline, like, the faster you finger, the better your team yeah. plays. Yeah. Do you, your kicker just missed a field goal. Do you want to slit his throat or kick him in the teeth? <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, this is. Invent this game. I don't think the NFL will sign off on it, but we'll just do generic colors. Yeah, we don't need we don't need the NFL to sign off. We'll on just it because do we'll part do, of the game will be Roger Goodell like being a, a complete and utter dickhead, like an actual yeah. robot that looks exactly like Roger Goodell will be the commissioner. We'll just do like the Chinese knockoffs, like Burt Simpson. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll just have all the team names just be a little bit different. That would be great. The Denver mean, Boncos. Yeah, there it is. The what we Washington you, Commanders. Yeah, so now you're now now you're just doing sexual stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, we <laughs> dude, sex Your sells. Mind's there, you put yeah. asses in seats. Yeah. All right, my hot seat is. Um, well, now I got to think. But oh, it's the Yankees. They suck. They can't score at all. It's fucking. I said this on the rundown yesterday, but the Yankees are so bad. I listened to the short porch the other day just to hear the misery. <laughs> wow, that's really yeah, bad. Yeah, they were. It was awesome. I mean, it was. It's it's comical. How about they had that clip last night, which was so funny that Garrett Cole like trying to show. Everyone in the dugout, how he would hit a home run because no one can hit anything. I think they've scored five runs in like the last four games. Is and, that right? And Joey Gallo is just mashing and mashing. In LA. What's the what? What is it right now? How many runs have they scored? I know they got shut. They've shut, been shut out two games in a yeah, row. Their now. last six games: zero, three, two, two, zero, zero. Ooh. And everyone's like, John Carlos Stanton's going to fix all this. It's a slump. Yeah. It's a bad time for a slump. Bad well, time for a they, slump. They've given themselves a big cushion. They're still up 10 games. Yeah, I mean, the Blue Jays just keep losing as well. Yeah, that's that's been tough to watch. Yeah, yeah so there's the panic button's out, but it's definitely not being hit. Um, all right, and then my cool throne sticking in baseball is Shohei Otani. Uh, the Angels lost, like, one of the most comical games ever. Uh, it's, it's very hard to see in, in Major League Baseball, but the Angels had – it was 2-2 in the top of the ninth. And they got a guy in in a rundown going to home, and just no one backed up the catcher. 
which is always so fucking funny. Mm-hmm. So the catcher threw it to third base, and then the guy just ran home. But Shohei Otani has been incredible. He ranks right now third in strikeouts, sixth in ERA, uh, ninth in batters uh, average against, and then as a hitter, ninth in OPS, fifth in home runs. He's he's incredible, it's, and he uh, just completely lost by being on like one of the more irrelevant franchises in all of professional. I want to sports. send a clear message here to Commissioner, whatever his name is, Manfred. Um, if Shohei Otani gets busted for steroids, you shut your fucking mouth. Yeah, you don't say a word about it. You keep no, that, no, no, no. You keep that the most no. under wraps. You actually, if that comes across your desk and you see it, you shoot yourself in the head. No, so no, that you no. Make sure to not tell. If me that either. comes across your desk, you make you you're like, hey, angels, we found this. You have one. You have two options. One, we say that he did this, or two, you have to trade him. So that we can just get him traded. We need him somewhere else. Yeah, let's trade him to a major market. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> fucking... It's like Anaheim. There's no reason that nobody cares about Anaheim, right? Like, they are a big market. I mean, kind of. They stink. I mean, the Dodgers are the, are the big market. I think that's probably the problem. But, I mean, you've got the Mets and the Yankees. Yeah, but those those have, like, history and everything. Yeah, it's and just... Those are, New York is, like, a, a just, big place. It's just weird to me how nobody cares about the Angels. But it's just universally accepted... We're not going to care about the Angels. Yeah, I mean, I think there's just Dodgers fans. Then people who live in Orange County are Angels fans, and it's too nice out to care. Mm-hmm. So it, I, it's crazy that they have two of the best players in Major League Baseball, and no one gives a fuck about them. Uh, okay, Billy, go ahead. I had to dig deep for this one, but thank God it happened 30 minutes ago. There was a huge fight at Patriots camp, and uh, people are asking, are the Patriots imploding? Oh, Yeah, no, I've well, actually uh, said uh, that. Billy, was it just Patriots camp? Were oh, there many many good people on all sides, Hank? No, it was, it was Patriots camp. But was it a mixed practice? Is what he's asking. Was it a mixed practice? Yeah. <laughs> oh with, no! With who, all right, Hank? new hot. So the Patriots were fighting against, but yeah, because Bill Belichick had that quote the other day where he's like, "I like Matt Rule. He's a football guy. He loves football." All right, other hot seat. <laughs> oh no! Wait. Billy. Oh, but all the ejected ones were uh, Patriots. Yeah. So the Patriots. Well, yeah. Bill Belichick <laughs> ejected his own team. Of cool. course. Okay. Uh, new hot seat. <laughs> I did. I Back think, to school shopping. I think. Skip what headline Bayless, did you read? I think Skip Bayless actually did say like this could be the last year for Belichick. Yeah. He also went at Bronny Jr. Which last that's night. awesome. Credit to he him. He just extended his career by twenty five years. It's, he it's, hates the man's entire bloodline. No one takes. No one takes a like. When you're like, oh, I'm going to take a day off, Skip Bale is like, no, I'm going to go after LeBron's kids. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> I mean, you have to respect it. Yeah. I have a hypothetical, too, that we can get into later, possibly. Okay. Why don't we just do it right oh, that's now? A, a hypothetical. I, I just, I, hypothetical. It was a hy- it was a hypothetical that I was thinking of last night, but it it was it was uh, from Draymond Green's wedding. It was Rich Paul and then LeBron, Draymond, Jason Tatum, and Steph Curry. Uh-oh. Could that starting five, including Rich Paul... Wait, still the, Draymond, Steph, LeBron, Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum, yes. and Rich Paul. I say yes. Yeah, probably. Well, it'd be tough, actually. I don't know. What, yeah, like just I was, hide him in his own. It was a hypothetical where I was like, yeah, probably, but also, yeah, I don't know. Can you play actually, m- maybe not, just because I. They would just attack, like, and w- how is he going to guard anyone? Like, but then they have LeBron. Like, they and have, then you could play four, but you could play five on four on the other end on defense, right? And Draymond can't shoot, so you could play five on three. But you're still playing five on three against three first first team All NBA players. I, would, would I think just having LeBron be able to collapse and then kick out to Steph Curry would make it unfair? Would would the, would those Jason guys Taylor, would those guys be <laughs> on their respective teams still? So it would be like a clone of them. Yes, because I think the Warriors like Draymond versus Draymond and Steph versus Steph. I think maybe the Warriors could beat them. Honestly, I think Steph would cook Steph. Who would yeah. guard LeBron? Um, LeBron I don't know. on Fuck the Warriors. Psh, anyone? Just throw out a name, K- Kevon Looney. Lock him down, hmm. fuck him up, but then like what you get clay on Rich Paul and you just yeah I mean crazy. so that was that was yeah it was uh, it was I don't know that's definitely a hypothetical but it's like your knee I think yes your knee jerk reaction yes. is yes because yes. Rich then, Paul is still a human being that can play basketball can he yeah did he Probably. how like really did he play on that the LeBron high school team no they met. And after he yeah. was, he was so, selling throwback jerseys, he's right? still a and body. LeBron met him. I, yeah, but I, my being. knee-jerk reaction says yes, but then I'm thinking about it more. Like you, you actually can't. Like if you put any of us on an NBA court, we wouldn't even be able to possess the ball. They would just steal it. I could possess it for like a second. I think <laughs> yeah, I, if you tried to pass it, they would they would be I, way bigger. I than would you. be good at getting. I'd get five seconds every time. I think I could play a little defense. <laughs> no, <else. laughs> see, you actually believe it. I'm saying mine I as a joke, but Billy actually thinks that defense. he could. Billy's like, yeah, I'd put the clamps on Billy, Draymond. you got dunked on. 
I know because I was playing too much defense. Right. Because we're trying too but hard. You just get dunked on more. Way I know, harder. but I have experience <laughs> and crossed getting dunked on way harder. No, I, I have good lateral movement. I actually think I think that team would beat any team in the NBA. Yeah, I do. I it just what's their bench look like though? Good question. Leon Rose. That's your best five versus your best five. Yeah, all people, mm. all other people from that wedding. Skip. No, not Skip. Stephen A. Shannon. Yeah. Le Shannon. Le Shannon. All right. Yeah, that was yeah. Okay. Good hi- hypothetical. All right. Go ahead, P- uh, Billy. Uh, my back to school shopping. Yeah. Uh, so there's a big debate online right now. You have to go shop for your class. Oh, I hate this. Ma- okay, never. No, no, no. Say it. no, no. I, I'm not mad at you. It's the. I'm it's digging the deep. People. I'm digging deep. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Math, science, English, and history. Those four subjects. If you have to buy a you know binder, folder, or you know notebook for those four subjects, yeah. which color do you assign to each subject? Okay. Red, yeah. blue. Green or yellow? This okay, is green is science. What? This is one of those debates that if you look at the replies, everyone has a different answer, and you're like, yeah, of course everyone has a different answer because there's no answer. So it's like one of those Twitter perfect algorithms where everyone starts talking about it and debating it. It's like no one, like we're what are we debating? No one, everyone's different. No, I, I've got my answer. Right, but everyone had their answer. Okay, and they so were it's, all it's, different. My answer science was just put is, everything science in the is green. Yeah. I agree with that. Science is green. History. Is orange or red? It's really sounds like red. you don't have an answer. Red's the only one. So it's it's the four primaries except it's the three primaries. Oh, so orange isn't the color. So yeah, it's so red. red. So red. What are the other two colors I have? Uh, blue and yellow. Okay, math is blue. Yeah, I agree with that totally. And then yellow is what was the other one? English. English. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Boom. Yeah, that's, that's the answer. No, that's big guy. What are you talking about? That's the correct way. Yellow well, is just, English. I just right. nailed because exactly. yellow's like the the. There's absolutely right. correct order to put it in. And, and, wait, and you think, don't even have you think English is blue women? far more? Yeah. No, or, or blue is red. Math. Isn't red? No, no. Red's nah, history. Is history. History is written in blood. No, blue is not. Blue is not history. Blue is history. history is the, written Mars, in blood. Our I planet is the so ocean. Much. No I hate this. So a majority much. of the no, no, history no, of this no, planet biology, is biology. So no, you're talking about geography, Hank. You're talking about geography is blue. Science is green because science yes. is outdoors. Science plants. Is red. Yeah, plants. Science is written no, in blood. No, no, sky is blue. History is written. people. History is written in blood. Sky is blue. Hank, history is written in blue. Science has more blue. So the outdoors no. has way more blue than it does blue, green. History blue is written is on the water. You ever heard about water, dude? No. No, but biology no, no, is the study clear. of plants. So well, that's green. Science. There's, there's fucking water everywhere. That's, no. the, that's the earth, baby. Well, then no, no, if you the take sky, a water class, the then sky, it can be blue. The sky isn't even blue, technically. It's just oh, how we God. see it. Here we go. You remember that debate we got into with Ryan Lochte of whether or not the, the water is blue or the pool is blue? <laughs> Yeah. That was an all-time moment. I just I saw it, and I was just like, I fucking hate... I'm out. No, because, you got to embrace debate on these. On the, is, the dumber the conversation is, yeah. the more passionately you have to care yeah, about it. Yeah, this is one of those ones where like, pe- or like people do regional things, like, this is called this, and it's like, yeah, and then it's called this here, and then it's called that here. Or people are like... Snow like isn't a big deal, like someone from the south, and then everyone argues about that. It's like, yeah, it depends on where you fucking grew up. Math is blue because chalkboards are blue. Okay. Sure. I didn't. I don't really follow that one. But I history. I've never could, seen a blue chalk. History board. could be orange, but aren't there was no orange blue? option. No, aren't they like grayish, greenish? Come out blue to me. All I know what? is what. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's they're whiteboards now. Yeah, Actually, I know they're whiteboards now. Be red. Yeah. No, 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 no. Math is written in blood. <laughs> Billy, this chalk chalkboards are not blue. No, they're, they're not. They're, they're, they're green. They're they're green. Yeah, they're green or gray. They're not even close. I, to I had like a, I had black ones. But when too. the chalk gets involved, it gets bluish. I would just never. I would end up having never. like one binder. I didn't look at it. Like yeah, I a just a bunch of different shit in it that I could never find. All I know is if that you on science textbooks, in school, you were a massive loser. Yeah, yeah, yeah just that's yeah. Real no, thing of this. Yo, no, you're doing it the first one. Your yeah. first day, anything you no. First day, I'd be like, all right, this is the year I'm gonna be organized. I got to sit down. I'm gonna write my agenda. Now it's just changed to like I'm I'm doing it right now where I'm like, this is the year I'm gonna win all my NFL bets. I got a system. So I'm just going to school every year. I got a sick ass trapper keeper. This is the year that I'm completely organized this is my homework to be done and i put it here when i'm done with the homework then by week two there's just like papers falling all over the place yeah yeah if you ever wondered those kids who just shoved papers in their backpack yeah that's me what they're up to right now podcasting, they're podcasting yeah. yeah i the only reason i clicked on this thing too Pass. was because it said like math was trending so i was like oh i hope this is one what? of those situations where nerd alert s- well no because i thought it was one of those dumb things where 
uh, someone like doesn't know the order of operations and people are arguing about like something yeah. that is very basic. Pim Das, bro. And then Who I clicked on that? it. I was like, God damn it, I'm in hell. <laughs> no, I, I listen. That is that's such a dumb debate that I actually love it. Yeah, I just also just hate. Like, also, I shudder at the idea of school. And also, I have the correct take on it, so that's always helpful. Billy, next one. Uh, cool throne Hillary Clinton. She killed Freya the walrus. Yeah, she yeah. did. Yeah. R.I.P. Freya the walrus. Would, would that put her on the hot seat? No, no I guess she, she got away, away with it again. Yeah. yeah. But what's yeah. the what's the uh, walrus got shot? And where? Hillary Clinton killed Norway. her. Norway. Yeah. Well, what's we, the first of all, Billy, the joke here. We don't know that it got shot. It definitely got shot. So Freya the walrus is the new Harambe. Right. So it Hillary was. Hillary didn't kill him. Well. Billy was, Billy was making joke about Hillary Clinton, but the story of Freya the walrus is that it was a walrus that was in this fjord in Norway, and it was, like, climbing on boats and shit, and everybody loved it. All the people that lived there would go up and, like, play with it and try to, like, mess with it a little bit. And then uh, the officials in Norway were like, yo, this walrus is getting too close to humans. Please stop getting so close to it. Yep. The people didn't stop. And so then the Norwegian officials, they just fucking killed the walrus. Yeah, no, they, I, I saw a story, but I didn't. Is there something it. I'm missing? Just Hillary Clinton kills people? That's the joke that Billy was making. Got it. It's, yes. it's, yeah. But Freya the walrus right. was fucking killed. We don't know. It said she was euthanized, too. Yeah. Which, that probably just means that they shot it. Well, they probably, yeah, they blew probably it shot up. it with, with poison. Or blew it up. Yeah, they probably, yeah. But Freya didn't hurt anybody. 3,000 pounds. That's fucking massive. Freya. Imagine Freya playing nose tackle. Beast. You can't, you, you can't run on that. Exactly. Yeah, Fuck no. Freya couldn't get si she couldn't get off the field after a play. Yeah. Uh, okay. Jake. PFT have a little something on your notes. I do? Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. What is it? Booger? Maybe. Maybe soup. Like a booger. Jake, that was such an alpha move right there. Yeah. I mean, I in the middle it's, it's you waited till your turn. No, he had it the whole like, time. Oh, you I was trying to motion to you. I didn't want to interrupt. I thought you were doing cocaine. Does he has he had it the whole time? <laughs> I noticed it like five minutes ago. What? Oh damn. Did I get it? Let me see. Yeah. Shit. Now, booger episode. So I did this yeah. entire episode yeah. with a booger. Uh -huh. Not the entire, because I stopped you. That's Thank true. You, Fact. Thank you for your service. Fact check. True. That's just unreal. That's an unreal Jake moment right there. <laughs> to wait till it's his turn and be like, by hey. the way, before I get started, you look like shit. You guys shit. were having a debate about colors. <laughs> like, I didn't want to interrupt that. Yeah, the flow. You, can't, you can't interrupt you can't that. You can't interrupt that. Yeah. Very yeah. important debate. Uh, my hot seat, I think I talked about this a few months ago, but now it's finalized. The NBA Christmas schedule. Mm -hmm. It came out. People are either happy or sad about it, but then you realize there's an elite NFL triple header the same day. So And they did it the same. What's the what's the NFL or what's the NBA? Bucks Christmas Celtics, day. Sixers, Knicks, Suns, Nuggets, Lakers, Mavs, Grizzlies, Warriors. Is that Bucks at Celtics? Yes. But you have Dolph Packers. Yeah, Dolphins. no, they, they they like they did it so that each market is fucked by the NFL. I, I remember I tweeted that when when the schedule came out. It's genius by the NFL. Yeah, you have Green Bay, Miami, Broncos, Rams, and Bucks Cardinals. That's a very good triple header. Wait, so mm. say the say the NBA again? Bucks, Celtics, Sixers, Knicks, Suns, Nuggets, Lakers, yeah. Mavs. So Cardinals are playing Suns, Packers are playing Bucks, like they, wait, they crisscross. The Dolphins are playing, and wait, no, he aren't playing. He, but, but yeah, disrespect continues. Rams and the Lakers. Yeah, yeah, they just fucked. They, it's it's so great. They just like, oh, here are your top teams that you're going to use for Christmas Day. Your we're going to steal. Them. Yeah, we're going to steal them. NFL is king. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that like, do you think that anyone in the state of Wisconsin is going to be watching the Bucks over the Packers? No. Right, because it's a regular season game versus right, right. this is going to be, what, week 15? Right. Like, this will be very important exactly. games, and they're high-caliber teams. NFL did it again. Yeah, and uh, cool throw him, big cat, the Bulls. Giannis, yeah, this is teasing. I don't like this. Giannis this says is he is not ruling out. Just, just down the line, the you never right know. Now. Maybe I play for Chicago. Yeah, no, he's teasing me. Does, is the booger do completely this. gone? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I still have a booger right now. No, you're good. I, I, Giannis Maybe is on the inside. There's no chance he's going to play for the Bulls. He's teasing. I feel like the Bucks fan base and front office can't be happy with that comment, though. I think they probably are because he's like he's clearly teasing. Sparks I'm the being story teased. We're talking about. I don't like being teased like this. Yeah, it's not nice. So very mean, Giannis. That's fuck that. you. Um, PFC just picking his nose now. Well, I'm fucking. Uh, no, Jake has good. me shook. You're you don't good. have anything on it anymore. But you're I feel good. like I have one. I feel like I didn't get all of it. No, you're good. Thanks, Jake. Uh, okay, let's get to Ryan Russell. Extra long. 
We do a Mount Rushmore with him. We talk. We catch up with him. He's in studio. Before we do that, PFT, you got a quick word from one of our sponsors? Yeah, one of our uh, favorite sponsors in the world because it's one that we eat and we consume all the time and that we made, part of my cheesesteak. It's a delivery and pickup only restaurant brand bringing you craveable cheesesteaks and loaded fries. I'm making a very, very delicious uh, cheesesteak soup tonight. How about that? Cheesesteak soup. Official. Official. Official cheesesteak soup. It's the official food. It's not official, but I'm saying you were talking about possibly doing it earlier, but now that you said it on the podcast, it's official. Yeah. Check, yeah. Check out the IG. Follow me on all social media platforms to watch my cheesesteak soup. Um, it is delicious, though. I We had part of my cheesesteak on Sunday, except for Jake, and we all loved it. It was fantastic. What, Jake? Jake didn't have any, Hank. Oh, you didn't have any? Says there weren't tongue. enough. So <laughs> oh, yeah. I took yeah. one for Wait, the team. You're, so you're lying about, about lying. I mean, oh, there were enough. To there were the tangled web no, we they were extra. This I offered to one to a store, and you guys I threw me under the bus. I offered one to mm. yeah. They were extra. The guests should take precedence. But he so didn't want me. one because he had already eaten dinner. Yeah. Oh, so so there was strict, extra. Strict diet. Okay. <laughs> Lean protein only. All right, but Jake is going to have one next Sunday. <laughs> right, Jake? Of course. You're going to have one next Sunday? I'm going to have two. He yeah. said he's going to have two. <laughs> yeah. He's going to have two. We also were talking earlier about doing a Billy food challenge, but just timing it. And trying to see if he can ever, we got to figure out what the time is of how fast he could eat one. I think yeah. it, I already did that. I how think fast was the it? six inches I did in a, a minute and five seconds. Yeah. Now okay. Break forty. So we got to do another one. <laughs> see how many you can eat in ten minutes. How about that? And that that will be the official Billy record. And anybody that beats the Billy record, Billy will um, give you a massage. So part of my cheesesteak is now available in hundreds oh. of select locations nationwide, with new locations being added every single week. They've got 6-inch and 12-inch classic cheesesteaks, chipotle cheesesteaks, buffalo chicken cheesesteaks, plus loaded fries and dessert brownie bites. Get lunch, dinner, or late-night delivery, and we are open seven days a week. Go to partofmycheesesteak.com to learn more. Order now on DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub. Part of my cheesesteak. Now, here's Ryan Rosillo. Okay, we now have uh, one of our favorite guests ever, a good friend, treat just a real treat to have him in studio what's the record what what a what? most recurring yeah. guest yeah. Yeah. probably lenny dykstra yeah no wit i think someone actually did the math i think whitney was number one and like maybe mike portnoy was number two it was something like that but you're up there you are if someone has to re repull it i think you're up there it is ryan Rossillo. he is in studio you guys asked of- me first i was going to be on the first one ever and then espn said no Oh, yeah, mm. that's right. And then Rachel Nichols didn't ask for permission and just was on it like three weeks later. <laughs> yeah, like, you oh. don't think about that. No, no Bomani did it too. <laughs> they didn't yeah. say anything to him. No, you don't was, think about that at all. Because I remember you guys were like, hey, we're starting up a podcast because we we're all out in the Super Bowl and we're like, we want to have you on first. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Great. And then I asked one person and they were like, oh, yeah, that'll be cool. No problem. And then it made the rounds. And they're like, no, he absolutely can't do that. And then and Chris so, Long was the first guest. Yeah. Yeah, which is actually better. It and, would be a cool thing to say, like if I were, you know, on campus somewhere, I'd get maybe shirts made. <laughs> but it was also <laughs> it was guest. also the worst OG. interview. It was the worst <laughs> interview we ever did because we we thought we were so funny well, this that was we not were gonna do either. we we did uh we were like, Oh yeah, PTI does five good minutes. Let's do four good minutes. And we, yeah, nobody's come up with we that were, joke. We were playing. <laughs> we were literally playing him off before we even asked him a question. It was so bad. We're like, yeah, but maybe we don't do that. You know, it'd be a good segment to do at, at some point with you. Maybe you can remember some of right now, but like the worst segments that you ever thought of for your own podcast. Yeah, I mean, look, the radio show would be way more fun to try to figure out because I remember forever post Van Pelt, Canel and I like my thing with radio shows or podcasts is always like you want to find a way to finish strong. You want to have an element that people are kind of looking forward to and i always feel like with radio shows we'd be like okay this is the shortest segment of the 12 i want to get the fuck out of here right <laughs> that was the segment right and the radio like almost local nationally everywhere i would listen to the end of radio shows i'm like the worst segment is always that last one so try yeah. to fix it um and scott and i did some different stuff and it kind of just worked and then danny and i were constantly trying different stuff and it was horrible <laughs> we like went oh for 12 on them like they just weren't working uh, Do you ever think about doing bringing back Who's the Jerk with Sarudi and uh, Kyle? Uh, How would that play? See, the best part about the Who's the Jerk thing. Um, For people who don't know, they yeah. did a, it, one of the funniest clips of all time. I'm SCP very proud of that. Yeah. And, and Rosillo and Stanford Steve, they did a, an entire segment that was Who's the Jerk, and they would basically just name something that someone in the room does. Like I remember when you're like, 
uh, what was it? Steve litters all the time. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and it, it was just it so. Out. It was just basically everyone ripping each other for being an asshole. I mean, obviously, I can do two different versions of this, and there's always one that's extremely long. But I was in this mode of you know trying to prove to people that I thought I was like good not only as a host but on the creative side of things, and I was always trying to figure out like okay, how can we do something like let's keep trying to do things, and if we fail, it doesn't like it's radio. You should fail a million times. You know, you should have a ton of it's bad day, ideas. Yeah. You know, it's every day you're doing fifteen. You're doing fifteen hours a week. So I remember we were at A and M for the rematch, Manziel against Bama, the year after they'd gone to Tuscaloosa to beat him. And Scott and I did a show, and then I was also doing College Game Day Radio. And I remember, I don't know, we were some like fucking restaurant, and we were in the parking lot. I go, I have this idea, and I go, it's gonna be really hard to explain. I go, but we're all friends, right? We're all friends, and we travel a lot. Like I'm with Steve. I was with Stanford Steve more than any other person for like a six year. His wife is probably ranked ahead of me for him. Right. But for me, it was Steve, and so. I go, I think it would be really fun if we just call each other out for every shitty thing that we have about us and then do it for the audience and just let the kind of questions fly. And we set it up as like a question thing of like, do you do this or why do you do this or what do you think of these things? And no one got it. Right. Like everybody's immediately like, what are you talking about? It's the airing of grievances. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, who's the jerk? But it wasn't necessarily that. It was just trying to come to some conclusion that also worked for the audience. And so then I explained it to my father, and he was like, that's one of the worst ideas you've ever had. <laughs> because, you know, it's kind of like in college one time we decided to just say, and I think I've shared this with you before, but one day seven or eight of us in a room were like, all right, let's all tell each person what we say about them behind their back. Yeah. Bad idea. I love it. <laughs> Bad this idea. Is, this is also uh, my buddy who you've met in Chicago. He, he does the trick at bachelor parties when we're all drunk, and he takes out like a big piece of paper. He's like, the bachelor, rank us as friends. I love that. It's, because it's it keeps the you most sharp. awkward thing ever. It's yeah. so funny. I love it because I yeah. think it just keeps us all sharp. We need more of that kind of stuff. And so that was, by the way, a horrible idea. So my dad was like, look, you know you, and you don't necessarily love being fucked with. And he's like, Scott doesn't exactly seem like a guy who loves to be fucked with. And he's like, Stanford Steve kind of just rolls with the punches, doesn't give a shit as much. He's like, if you do this and you do it live on the air where you start basically being like, why do you do this? Or what do <laughs> mm -hmm. you, like, it's going to be really bad. So then I was like off the table and then I kind of brought it back again. And Scott's like, why do you want to do this? Like, <laughs> do, do, I, do I do stuff yeah, that you right. guys want? Like, then it started turning to like an insecure thing. Right. Yeah. So I go, all right, fuck it. And then somebody else was like, hey, let's change it this way. And then I got really weird about it. And then Scott's like, hey, it's fucking who's the jerk. This isn't the Mona Lisa, like relax. Right creative guy mm -hmm. and so then we did it and it was hilarious like stanford c was like who hates you more men or women ryan yeah and you and still I was like wow <laughs> that's deep i was like that's a tough one yeah and i was like probably at first men longer term women <laughs> <laughs> and then uh scott we i forget we were like what is it what is it about you like when you travel and it isn't going your way. Do you think you're fun to hang out with? Or something. I don't yeah. remember it word for word. And then the Stanford Steve one, I just straight up was like, why do you litter? <laughs> <laughs> so great. And you told the story like he just throw He throw just throws shit, shit outside of the car. Like, yeah. Is he, is he like throwing a cup out of the window? <laughs> like a full styrofoam cup? I think littering is like one of the most fucked up things you yeah. can do. You want to know why? Because it's super solvable. Right. Yeah. It's just, just don't keep, throw, yeah. just keep it in your car there's, for a little bit longer. There's going to be a trash can <laughs> yeah, at some be. point. I promise you. They're, they have them everywhere. Yeah. A lot he, of places. A lot he, of states have. He got a lot of blowback. He said I, that he I, had a lot of people being like, dude, you litter? Because we, right. we were in the car for game day and, you know, he, he, he always drove. And I think he like threw a piece of gum in. And then just took the wrapper and rolled the window down. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, that's such old school yeah. literature. That's like 1970s Yeah, literature. seriously. I was like, that's like back of the school bus. Like, I threw something out the window. And yeah. I'm like, you actively, it took you more effort to litter than it would have to just throw it on the fucking floor. Like, are you serious? It, it, it probably feels cool, though, to like throw something big out of a window. Yeah, I would imagine. Like, it's like Ron Burgundy throwing a burrito yeah, out of just like window. Yeah, just like throw a full bag of combos out the window. And I was just so like... What the f like? I'm friends with a guy that does this, and of all the other stuff that we all do that we would probably like to be better at or just eliminate from our game in general. Um, but yeah, he doesn't litter anymore now. But it, the, you're like the who's a jerk is genius because it is true. Like 
when you're together, we'll be on trips and stuff, and people will always ask, like, do you guys ever get in fights? And we actually, like, honestly have never gotten in a real fight. You guys have never gotten in a fight. Not a real so. fight. But what That's will happen... That's fucking crazy. What will happen is, and it happens every trip, where it's like, we'll be at the end of the trip, and we'll just be sitting in an Uber, all of us silent. Because we're like, yeah. we, it's time for us to all just be alone for a minute but we have like, that level of awareness where we right. know that if we're going to talk to each other we're going to we're going to get into like little minor little arguments that'll turn into something bigger so our way to get around that is to just bring billy around yeah and that way we get all of our aggression out on him and so that way it's like me and big cat are still a team right we have billy to shit on yeah yeah, Billy, I think that's very healthy. Billy, PFT and I have never, yeah. He seems to fill the Mario Chalmers role a yeah. little bit. <laughs> yeah, he is. On the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy you guys have never fought. It's funny because I was just out in the hallway talking to one of the guys about uh, SVP and Rosillo, and, he, and I you know, said the funny thing about that show was like a lot of people think I got the show because I was his friend, and he just liked me on the air. We weren't friends at all, and then we became friends because of the show. And to be in a room with a guy four hours every day for six years, we didn't have five fights. And the yeah. four, maybe the three or four that we had, we had a, we had a two that were pretty good. Uh, They're both definitely my fault because I was like, you know, sort of being like, you know, that was my own shit of being insecure, of being there and kind of having this platform and knowing nobody wanted me to have it. And, you know, it was, sometimes it would just build up. But I always feel great. Like, I've seen radio shows where guys fucking hate each other. Oh, yeah. I mean, Local Mike and Mike radio. at the end. Like, the Mike and Mike at the end, that 30 for 30, they're like, they literally did not speak to each other unless it was on air. They would sit down in silence and then the light would turn on, they would talk, do a show, and then walk away in silence, which is nuts. That's nuts to me. Like, that's such a yeah. level of, and I, 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 wait, did I say Mike and Mike? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't mean Mike and Mike, but also them. Probably. Yeah, because I was kind of like, there's a no, 30 Mike, for 30 for Mike and Mike Mike already? and the Mad Dog, oh. yeah, yeah. They they were. Mike and the Dog. Yeah. No, but, there, there was a story that but came Mike out. But Mike and the Mike, Mike, Mike I think, were the buster. same. Yeah. Mike and Mike wouldn't talk to each yes, other. Yes, yeah. yes. So both. So I guess the, the key is to just not have a mic. That's a good way. This if you're a program yeah. director listening yeah. right now, don't Keep hire anybody. Yeah. I've had out. fights with Hank, but I've never, and I think PFT has as well. But I think PFT and I always have like a a good understanding of like we're we're in it together. Like we are. Like it's just we always it's a relationship, have each other's back. man. I mean, it's it really is. I mean, without the sex, usually for most shows. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's why we have Batgirl. So people thought mm -hmm. that me and PFT were maybe. We we kiss we so kiss we every year <laughs> on his birthday when it turns into my birthday we kiss but that's just something that's more of a ritual that's a tradition that's yeah, a tradition that's not, that's it's, like, like, there's no sexual I think intention they do that in Greece. yeah isn't it cool when people do inside jokes in your face <laughs> yeah that I can't even explain that girl <laughs> I don't even like know what to say anymore yeah about I, know, I, I, just, girl. Yeah, I know I saw that girl I, yeah. I saw some of the back girl stuff and I just kind of gave up. Yeah, I, was like, I don't think I know no, what they're doing. You know, yeah. I don't know what you were me, doing. You'd yeah. be dumber if you found out the origin behind it. Yeah. So just roll with it. No, yeah. I did appreciate reading some of the stuff because it was like, why is it always the female heroes? Right. And it was like, mm -hmm. is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's what it is. Yeah. DC just ate 90 million because yeah. they're like, you know what? I mean, I hate to be that guy, but it She's sounded a, like a tax motivation. Yeah. Yes. Let's just, yes. uh, let's not let the broad on the big yes. screen. Yes. yes. Um, all right. So you, you were just. <laughs> Every time I say something, we're so looks around like oh my god i got you i saved you uh <laughs> no no i know a guy who actually uses the word broad and i'm like jim florentine <laughs> but i just feel like do you be like hey any broads out tonight <laughs> <laughs> where the dames you at? Show that's, up like, your, that's your... like pete rose's quote did you see that the other day I when didn't. a reporter asked like he went out for the phillies because it was like the 50 year anniversary or whatever it was and they're like a reporter was like, hey, uh, are you going to comment about the sexual misconduct allegations against you? And he's like, I'm here for the Phillies. I'm here to, like, celebrate this. So why don't you, like, mind your own business, babe? He said, babe. <laughs> <laughs> what do no, you think you were going to get from Pete Rose? Uh, <laughs> nothing. I never expect anything from him. I, I always, you know, I'm, yeah. I don't know. We're doing a Pete Rose this yeah. August. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tell you what. Let's ask Rosillo all the questions that we get asked. Yeah. But we'll just redirect them towards him. Who's the best interview, interview you've ever had, Ryan? <laughs> Uh, you know, it's actually, I shared this on the podcast, but the Bill Russell interview that I did in the first year I was ever on the air was one of the coolest things I've ever done. Cause I was nervous as shit. I couldn't believe we, we only got him because we were promoting some other thing that his, his handler was doing. So it was rare. He never did anything. Right. And so really nervous. I'm doing a morning show with a couple other guys in their twenties. We, we barely have any hours under our belts doing this radio show. And somehow we end up with him in the interview, which was crazy to begin with. And as soon as the host introduced him, he stopped us and interrupted us. And we're like, fuck, like, mm -hmm. this is going to suck. He's going to be like, who are these idiots? He's going to be Korean. And he goes, 
if you're going to introduce me uh, instead of Hall of Famer, an 11 time champion, I would appreciate it if you introduced me and were like, oh no, as captain of the Boston Celtics. Ooh. And I was like, oh, wait. hell yes. Yeah. So that one's always, because it was so early and it was a big deal. And I thought you were going to say Brandon Marshall. Well, <laughs> the, the other one. I'm probably most proud of that Brandon Marshall interview. For those that don't know, we were pitched Brandon Marshall, the receiver. It was confirmed by everybody. We were good to go. Uh, I open up the Zoom and I'm like, that's not Brandon Marshall. And but it was. But, but it was. But it wasn't. And I'm immediately like double checking an email and I'm going, what the fuck are you going to do right now? Who is this? And I'm like, what's up, man? And he's like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, all right, cool. And I'm like, I can't go on the Zoom chat, and I'm trying to, like, message Saruti being like, or Kyle. I think it was just Kyle at that point. And I was like, what? And so, it's the first question. You can go back. It's, we left it up because I was like, fuck it. I was like, what's up, man? What have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, ho hoping to find some sort of he's, he's... common ground with his answer of what he's been doing. Yeah, because I'm trying to, like, <laughs> why would I have a different Brandon Marshall that he would think he's – like, hey, I'm doing one of these sports podcasts tomorrow. Like, right. why does he think this is okay? Right. If this isn't, like, something's going on. And then I actually did remember, I'm like, oh, I think he's that Denver guy. I kind of like their Yeah, he won a linebacker. Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah, I like their linebackers that year. But I still, I mean, you guys know how this is. Like, if you let your head get fucked with in the process, you can make it way worse. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, you may think it's the Broncos linebacker, but now you're so screwed up because you can't believe that somebody confirmed this. And then as he was answering, I'm checking the email, and I was like, no, it's actually – the receivers confirmed on the email from the person. <laughs> so by the third question, I finally like piece it together. And, and then Kyle was like, what do you want to do with that interview? And I go, leave it up, and then we'll tell everybody what happened. Yeah, huh? it was, I was great. Actually, I was actually proud of myself. Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. What else do we get? Oh, uh, what's Dave Portnoy like in real life? <laughs> <laughs> Is he the same guy or teddy bear? I haven't, I haven't hung out with Dave in a long time. Um, but I met Dave. I met Dave with McShay. So I had McShay in studio in 03 because I was reading all of his war room stuff when he was still with Sporting News. So we were about the same age. We we're both living in Boston. Uh, McShay and I, you know, pretty quickly hit it off. And then he came up to the studio to do some in-studio stuff with us. And he brought Portnoy. And he's like, hey, this is my buddy Dave. And I was like, hey, what's up, dude? And he's like, yeah, I do Varsity Sports. And I was like, oh, that pamphlet you guys hand out? <laughs> He's like, well, it's not a pamphlet. It's just, and I was like, it was like immediately he was Thanks, all seized yeah, up. Yeah. Like, fuck this guy. Yeah. And um, and then they, they actually did some radio stuff from the place, which is another like old story. And, uh, you know, so I've actually known, I've known, I mean, we're not like, you know, I'm obviously a lot closer with Billy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How much does Big Cat make? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> you know what's cool for you guys is nobody really has any idea. No, where we at just, ESPN, we all knew what every single one of us made. Yeah. And I remember one time, like somebody asked me, like, "What's your goal?" I go, "I want to walk to the cafeteria at ESPN and have every other on-air person motherfuck my contract." Yep, I was like, "That's my goal yeah. at this company." Yeah, I want everyone here in the salad bar to be nice to me, and then when I walk away, I'd be like, "I can't fucking believe what they signed Rosillo for." <laughs> who, Never happened. Never happened. Right. Who yeah. was that one guy at, at ESPN? Because I think we get it mixed up occasionally. Was it Polian or was it Mac Brown? They used to go to all the like little kiosks yeah, where they'd yeah. sell candy. He thought it was free. And he thought yeah. it was free the whole time. Nobody ever stopped him. He would just Probably. take candy bars. I believe I'm to blame for that mix-up because I think I've told it both ways. Okay. Maybe it's both of them. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if Lou Holtz was in the mix on that one too. <laughs> yeah. Because they, all the stuff was just there, but it was monitored by cameras, and then somebody realized either Mac or Paul. I think it might have been Mac. I and think Polian's got bigger – he's got more room in his pants. He yeah. used to wear those giant khakis. Polian was one of my favorite guys ever. Like, when we did an ESPN draft of putting together your best, like, seven-on-seven seven team of all the guys that played quarterback, receiver, or whatever, O-line, and then we talked Polian into doing it with us for two segments – it's the most annoyed I've ever seen anyone ever for a radio interview. Because we'd be like, Canel's like, hey, I'm still on the board. And Paulie would be like, no. <laughs> That's fucking incredible. What other questions do you guys get all the time? Um... How much do you make per episode? Yeah, we. Oh, so that's the thing. Yeah, that's we, the thing. I don't see your salaries. I always see this episode. Seventy-five thousand. Well, we is that told. True? I, no, I just we told people that. And I, people believe it. I signed a new contract in June, and congratulations. I, I, thank you. I get. Hey, by the way, you didn't tweet out anything about that. Well, you, I did. Is I that I normal. I addressed it on the show. Yeah, it's it's pretty standard. Like I didn't want, I didn't want to put anything out about it. But then I found out that somebody was snooping around. They were going to write an article, so I said, okay, I'll just say it on here. 
and we'll get the clicks for it. So wait, you said how much you made on the podcast? No, no well, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I make three bored apes per episode. Yeah. And then I get uh, a slurp juice to go along with that, which you can then use to create a new ape. Mm-hmm. I'm still so doing I'm just 75000 an episode. I'm yeah, that st- sounds... I'm saying USD currency. Yeah, but oh, that's yeah, it's what it makes. now, yeah, because inflation. Thanks, Biden. No, but how do you think he's doing as a job? Biden? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say this, and I, I really wish I'd handled it better I love a couple you years ago. I love you so much because we could ask a question a joke, and you'll be like, well. Yeah, I'll give you an answer. <laughs> yeah, you always <laughs> answer. I don't like any politicians. I really don't. Like, I think something's wrong with you if you want to be one. Big time. I agree. And so if I am critical of, like, a Republican, someone would be like, oh, typical fucking ESPN, whatever. Like, when I got arrested... Fox News was so fired up. These are like shithead liberal ESPN guy. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Is that's what's happening to me? Like Fox News is excited yep. because of this. And then on the other side, like I'll see other dumb shit that is left. And I'm like, that's fucking stupid, too. So uh, I just I'm not a huge fan because, you know, here's like this is actually something I've talked about before. But like there's a huge lesson in the Sam Hinky run with the Sixers. All right, let's go. I like this. We are talked to in the way that we apparently prefer to be talked to. Yep. All right? And so when you see politicians searching for the most vanilla answer that's like the least offensive to either polar, you know, like, you're like, yeah, we can say like we don't like to be talked this way, but we actually do want to be talked to this way. Yeah. So where Hinky was unapologetic and he's like, yeah, I have fucking guys that we could cut from the G League playing on this team. Like whenever anybody does like would Kentucky beat – I think the best Kentucky team with like five lottery picks would have beaten one of those tanking Sixers teams because they had they had one point like eight guys in the roster that had never played more than five hundred NBA minutes, and since he was so unapologetic about it and didn't do like the Carlos Boozer one year thirteen million that other teams had done or play right. guys out of position, he was just like I'm making sure I'm giving myself the best chance, and he didn't massage the message at all. That that to me is always this like really important message that because he didn't play the game with us, we got more mad at him. Like, yeah, he mm-hmm. definitely could have done it and done it a different way, been better with the media, been more open, pretended he wasn't really doing it, even though everybody like teams are tanking, but we don't want to be told it. Right. It's fucking crazy. Right. And that's why like it to me is a is a clear relation to how politicians talk to us like we can all say all oh, these guys are phony and i hate it and it's, like, it's yeah but if they told us how they really felt about shit it'd be we'd, bad we would yeah. lose our minds yeah so you know i don't whenever anybody jokes about the political shit you know post everything that happened i did a bad job a couple years ago uh i would be like i'd love to talk about it but i there's no point mm-hmm. there's yeah. no point really yeah, no, because at some point assumes, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna say, and look like when i was at first when i first was espn so that's oh six there was a sign up in the radio department that said, if what you're talking about is not interesting to an 18 to 45 year old male, stop talking about it. <laughs> That's dude's rock. All right. <laughs> and, you know, for the old rules, it's like, why would you talk about religion right. on your yeah. sports talk show? Why would you talk about politics on your sports? Now, people could say, hey, this is more important. This is more important than sports. Well, no shit. All of this stuff is more important than sports. Right. But you know what? Like, they don't talk about sex trafficking on MSNBC. Right. Because that shows about money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those shows are about finances and all this other stuff. Is it as important as some of these horrible things that happen to society? Of course it isn't, but that's not what the job is. So that's where I think, like, again, this is sort of expanding to a much bigger deal. I'd love to talk about some of the stuff, but I know I can't win no matter what I do. And now I know I've been kind of placed in a box anyway. So but they, but you're right. Like, the important part, you know, we'll have – things will happen in the world and people will, like, be like, why didn't you talk about this on the show? And it's like, well, I think people come to this show to hear non – serious stuff because everything is more serious than sports yeah if you like, tell me stupid. this is sports more is I, I yeah. would agree with you every time Correct. all of these things are more important than yes. sports but right. it's not it's not really i don't know look everybody can do the job however they want to do it yeah yeah and, yeah uh, so uh, biden yeah, what b plus what are we saying here <laughs> just to wrap up i, I did have a guy <laughs> dm me the other day who's like how come you guys haven't addressed hunter biden's laptop it's like, okay. Like, well okay yeah. <laughs> sounds like that's sounds like that's all you want to hear anybody talk about all the time <laughs> And yeah, then you go I'm check sure out their timeline, the and it's just a bunch of retweets about Hunter Biden's laptop. Yeah. Like, like, I, I don't think know. you know way more to than me, I do. To me, it would be like, if I like somebody, how they, you know, they do their sports show or whatever, and then I found out about their politics, I don't know. I don't, would I be like, oh my God? But people, you know, look, people get really, really passionate about it, which I completely understand. Um, but I don't, 
really know. I think I've kind of learned a little bit more the last couple of years. Like, does stuff will happen? I'd be like, oh, I've got this segment in my head. I've got this 10 minutes and it'll be killer. I'm like, I just don't know if there's that many wins in this. Right. Yeah, I, I feel like it's even, the scope is narrowed even further than if it's not interesting to an 18 to 45 year old male. Don't talk about it. Now it's like, if it's not about NFL football, right. don't talk about it right. because it can be March. It can be April. It can be any month. And it's like, well, if you just power rank quarterbacks in a certain division, then that's going to do better ratings yeah. than anything else. Who won the draft for an entire month? Yeah, is is that's it, a good. We'll question, get more though. clicks than NBA, and I know you love the NBA, but and I love the NBA, but no NFL drives. Will. NFL drives everything we're doing. If you're not doing the NFL, you know, look, it was very clear even at ESPN and even now. Like, I probably well, I'm not going to say probably. I'll just be. I like college football more than the NFL. I'm starting every Monday show with, with the NFL. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, it just it doesn't. You know, the joke used to be rather you do an average NFL segment on ESPN radio than than a really great NBA one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The NBA is kind of this weird thing where it lives in this this awareness that's probably I mean, I, the NBA Twitter thing is like perfect that exists on Twitter because in the moment it can feel like it's the most important right. thing that's happening. And you're like, yeah, but this isn't always a really good reflection yep. of what actually And then matters. you see the top 50 most watched games. Which obviously, I don't really care. Or, it it yeah. was literally like huh. game six of the NBA finals was like 48. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, mm -hmm. okay, that makes sense. Like Monday Night Football week 12 was a top 50 watch thing just because that's what people do. I do think the way they're packaged, you know, plays into that a little bit more yeah. too. You know, just the limited uh, limited product, I guess, would be the best way to go ahead and talk about it. But yeah, I, I mean, I think some of the NBA stuff that's fun because it's all soap opera which is perfect for what we do. I don't know that the NFL has as much of that, but it just – it's never really seemed to matter. Like you can look at all the numbers, you can look at all of it, and it's like, hey, you know, hammer it, hammer it, hammer it, mm -hmm. as yeah. much as you can do NFL. I'd probably rather talk about all the bullshit with college football because I just think it's a little yeah, bit more fun. It, it is the yeah. rankings. Like as much as everybody freaks out about it, like it's fun. I, I have fun I, trying to project, like, oh, what would happen if this or that, or how's the committee going to feel, or wow, the committee hates this or they like this. Like that to me is a little bit more of the NBA soap opera thing. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do, and, and it sucks because on Twitter now, if you like argue on Twitter, it's you're mad. But one of my like I look forward to it every year is just on Monday or Tuesday getting on Twitter and just firing off college football takes and letting people argue about it. And like going back and forth for 10 tweets with some dude about some some team's schedule cuz it's fun. I like doing it. You're you right. like arguing with somebody you don't know about college football. It, it's one of my my favorite things to do. It's so much fun. Because it's like you'll never agree, but it's fun to do. I'm in. Yeah, I'm gonna we'll do start doing Thursdays. it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to undercut you. Yeah, just fucking do it. Um where are we at with Chris Paul? People want to know, because like <laughs> it's you know well, you had a you 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 had a I summer very, to I actually, go away. I feel you went really away. good. Yeah, armed with the latest information, I feel really with good. COVID. I didn't say it. <laughs> what is what is that latest information? The, the, the whole team had COVID. That, did he give the whole team COVID? Well, he's a great assist man. How many it's, points do you think COVID is worth? Because they, they lost by forty. So nineteen. Yeah. COVID twenty twenty COVID or twenty twenty two COVID. Yeah, twenty twenty two COVID. How many? Yeah, oh, not yeah, as many as twenty twenty. Yeah, no this this COVID is not. I'd say like at the out on at the onset, it's worth forty. Could twenty twenty two COVID play in twenty twenty? It was different league. Yeah, twenty twenty different was playing against grandmothers and grandfathers. <laughs> Assistant plumbers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to ask you something. Okay. Would you rather be built different or one of one? Oh, good oh, question. Can, can I do a third option? Can I be him? Could you lead first take with that? What about that dude? <laughs> yeah. I'd like or to be him. him. Yeah, I'd like him. to be are him. Are those the four one seeds? That dude. Well, I feel like that dude and him are a little overlappy. I think we could come up with a fourth. Built different, one of one, him. Or, yeah, he or is have him. a dog in you. Yeah, that's hot right now. People it's hot now. I don't think him. it's a long term one seed. <laughs> Flash no. in the pan. Because here's the thing like, a lot of people throw around. Well, you can you say know, goat is the fourth one because people throw away throw around goat yeah. for everything. No, that was actually a segment that did work on the radio show that Canell deserved more credit for. It was this week's. It was goat of the week, and so and everybody like, you know, somebody tweeted goat at me on my birthday, and I was like, eh, take it easy. I'm, like, I'm doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, just, that's also tricky because you could if you talk to somebody that's older than let's say forty five, when they hear goat, they think oh bad. That's like somebody that fucks yeah. something up. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Because when I think about one of one, that's getting thrown around a lot. Yeah, it yeah. is. You're like, you know, you're 6'7", you're a pretty good scorer. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. There's a bunch. Like, <laughs> the elephant man is one of one. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a lot of one of ones. I think I'd rather be built different. Because that implies that, like, God specifically set some time aside when he's working on me. Yeah. He's like, okay, this is my passion 
right here. But people, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this guy like a schooner. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna make this this guy exactly five eight and one eight. But people like to throw around built different when like they go to the gym at five a.m. That's built different, you know. I I think he is I think he is him or being him is pretty strong right now. I when do, you're him. Yeah, no, I think that's a really strong one seed. <laughs> I just don't know that fourth one if I'm super passionate about it, any of our options so far. Yeah. But yeah, it's a really it's smart, PFT. Really good observation because it's it's the goat has been watered down. The correct answer is Secretariat. Yeah. Best horse of all time. Yeah. Top Best 50. athlete of all time. Sports. Heart was bigger than everyone else. I 1999 did go- Sports Century. Yeah. I went back. 36th. Yeah. The other day, I watched Secretariat's Triple Crown races. It's oh, insane. Re- really? Yeah, I did. How was that? How was the rest of the day? It what was electric. It was the best day of my life because that, that third race that he had, yeah. incredible. And then what you can actually do, though, with the Triple Crown is you can you can imagine what the other horses would have ran against him, like some of the other all-time greats. I think the closest second would have been like – a full second and a half behind Secretary. It might have been American Pharaoh. American Pharaoh was insane. It was a great horse, yeah. yeah. I, I saw American Pharaoh at Breeders when he beat everyone. This isn't a like, bit? Damn. No, 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 you're doing this? No, yeah, I yeah. did. Uh, yeah. D- tell me why I Secretary every race is not the Saratoga goat. today, so I don't. I know that. not a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying Secretary's overrated? Are you? This is fucked up. I don't know how I feel about it. Okay. It's okay. Been 20, that's okay. That's a good pass. 23 years. Yeah. You didn't pass on Biden. You're waiting, you pass for, on you're waiting for all the facts to come out about Secretary. <laughs> and by the way, Biden still has some time. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. Done, maybe. It's true. <laughs> he's he's just rounded the first turn. <laughs> They're a quarter in. What, what if has anybody ever had the take like Secretary was definitely on steroids? No, they they saw his heart. It was double the size of a regular horse. But isn't heart. that a That's side effect time, of? Yeah. I don't know. I, does steroid make your heart grow? That was bigger? like the Lance Armstrong thing. He had cancer. Would he yeah. take steroids? Would he an asshole? Yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of, maybe. <laughs> um, all right. So you were in Europe. I Any was. Any highlights? You didn't. You you avoided the Chris Paul question very nicely. Like, are we going? My, let me rephrase. You brought it, it up again. Even are better you, though. Are you going? <laughs> are you going hard back into Chris Paul this year, or are you going to keep your distance? hoping things go different, even though they've never gone different for him? Uh, you know, it's tough. This was a tough one. That game seven was so bad. I had such a bad time. And then I had to do a podcast, like, literally right after. And everybody listened to see how depressed I would be. It was awesome. Because it was so bad. It was awesome. And I was like, you know, you're just sitting there like, what do you want me to say? Like, I'm an asshole now? Like, I guess so. Uh, so, you know, look, man, I really think Phoenix should have done a better job Uh my whole goal would have been, if I were the Phoenix Suns, to get him some kind of combo guard that if you're not just to back up his minutes, but to like relieve some of the stress of, of whatever was going Defense, on. Defense, yeah. Um, and they didn't do that, of course. Um, they couldn't sign a big guy two years ago. Sarver's a terrible, terrible owner. And, you know, they went through this whole DeAndre Ayton thing to be like, hey, do you want to just fuck with this guy and then match, save a mil or two later yeah, on? Right, right. Like, that was so pointless. Um, because they were like, oh, we don't think you're going to, you know, whatever. They shaved a year off. Um, so I actually think they, and it's all really to Sarver. It's not James Jones. So unfortunately, I don't think, you know, I, I think they should have tried to figure out a roster wise to to help him. And I really don't feel like they did. Okay. So uh, I'm a little worried about it. And I think the Warriors are going to be even better. Ooh. Yeah. I like That's that spicy. take. What about Kevin Durant? Is, is that still in the picture for the Suns? I got to tell you, what are you I, love, I love him. But he's making it tough to love him he's lately. He's really ma- – I've, I've gone the entire I, – I used to be baby back bitch Durant. Then I completely flipped when it's like, no, this guy's pretty cool. Like, he responds to people on Twitter. He is kind of unapologetically him. And this last one is tough. It's tough. To sign a four-year deal and then be like, fire everyone that I hired, it's tough. Yeah, those guys didn't want Atkinson around because they didn't want to be coached. So then they decide, hey, let's bring in Steve Nash right. so he'll just have the – perfect demeanor perfect personality he's not going to push these guys and now um they don't want him and then it's like so wait sean marks is the guy when you you basically were like hey sign deandre jordan who shouldn't even have gotten the contract but he got the buddy deal yeah and so you're getting everything you want and then you still want everybody fired yeah. here's here's how it's summed up just play in the fucking basketball games yeah. and maybe things will work out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay. They're still I, I are mean, really this, good. This net story, I'm I've had it. Like Kyrie, people finally found out what happened here. They were still gonna give him the max. Yeah. And they just wanted a games played stipulation. Yeah. And he's like, nah, man, can't control can't you know, can't control me. But like, do you mind playing? Right. Is there any way if we give you this four year extension, you just we're gonna play in more games? And so I have no sympathy for any of those guys. Whenever I see anybody on TV being like, well, you know, 
they could have done a better job with their buy level exception. And I'm like, stop fucking talking. It's about one thing. The guys don't play in enough games. And if they did, you're right. Yeah. This team would actually be pretty good. Really good. Mm-hmm. Stephen A. Smith had the all-time take of, like, when Russia invaded Ukraine, I didn't know if Kyrie Irving was going to go play basketball that day. Because it might have <laughs> just been too much for him to deal with at the time. I'll tell you what. Stephen A. on the Kyrie stuff has been unbelievable. It's been great. It's, it's really his yeah. magnum opus. How do you feel about Stephen A. Smith taking off the entire month of August with a shoulder injury? He's back this week. If there was time, you're oh, going to yeah, take time July off. In August, yeah. you, can't, you can't take time off at ESPN during the fall. We just covered college football. Mm-hmm. And like even for me, too, like right after college and Super Bowl, it would be like right into NBA trade deadline, right into March Madness, right into the NBA playoffs, right into the draft, right into free agency. The six weeks that you get to take off when you're on air are the last couple of weeks of July and as much of August as you can. So, um, you know, the guy works, you know, for any shit that people want to give Stephen A, because, you know, you're just out there in the pop, you know, spotlight long enough. I would not give him a shit because that guy says yes to everything. Yeah. He works his ass off. Um He is him. Yeah. So I don't I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get on his case for taking off the time when ESPN is like, go reset, take this time off, be ready to go week one NFL, and then that's a straight run until, you know, the NBA finals. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's again another perfect example of like I was asking you a question that was like kind of a joke and you're like, Well, I'll actually give you <laughs> A great detailed response of why it is appropriate. To I'm take taking off this August. really seriously today. You are. I, I appreciate guys, that. Yeah. Okay. So what, I was at a rooftop party and I was like, I can't drink. I'm going on P- <laughs> PMT. PMT. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. You got any uh, World Cup takes? Commentator. Uh, yeah. Which sport? Oh, good question. Uh, football. Soccer. Uh, I don't. I don't. I tell you though. I, I lo- like I really, Italy this year. I like soccer, but I don't care about it. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think it's, that's where I'm at. I used to hate it. Oh, I, I care about the World Cup. That's the only thing I do yeah. care about. Are you going to pick a team? Are you root for anybody? Italy. I think Italy, I think this is Italy's year. Are you Italian what about, at all? What about America? I'm like 1% Italian. Are I mean, I, no, I think Italy's just too good. Like, they've got Chiesa. They've got – this oh. is – it's all setting up to be Breaking Italy's year. Yeah. He sounds good. I'm yeah. rooting for America. Yeah. Yeah. I think I will, too. Mm-hmm. They're <laughs> yeah. my second team behind, <laughs> behind Italy. I'm going to root for Iceland. Are they in it? Nope. I don't think so. Soccer's the, the, the sport for... Uh, can we research on that? Yeah, Jason, you research. I've always said soccer's great because it's... Sometimes you wake up on a Saturday or Sunday morning before, like, real sports start, and you just want to see a ball move around on grass. Like, when you're hungover on a Saturday, just put it... It's nice. It's a nice ath- aesthetic. Ooh, that group H. Group, group of death. death, yeah. Uh, I don't see Iceland. No, I don't think so. I got to tell you, you want to talk about overestimating someone's interest in your European travels... Mm-hmm. The Chris Long Big Cat text thread. <laughs> oh, really? Well, no, I mean, I was out too. I sent you guys epic Yeah, I felt shit bad about that one. From the it fjords. was a week. Oh, was you did week. go to Iceland. I yeah, did, anyway. yeah. I, yeah. I just got yeah. back from France. I went to Iceland. This is, I'm still kind of I in that ESPN to, mode. I listened to the Built podcast. Different. It was fantastic. Ryan did on his show uh, a full detail of his Iceland travels, and it was – I've never heard a podcast like that, and it was fucking hilarious. Thank you. Yeah, that was a that was a sincere compliment. What'd you think of the Blue Lagoon? Made it the last day. All right, I gotta tell you, it's a great question. Great question. This is another question I was <laughs> expecting a serious answer to. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing about the Blue Lagoon, okay. it's, it's, got not blue. it's got the it's minerals. It's got the minerals in the clay, right? No, I've, I've you got, smeared it on yourself. Did a whole whole breakdown of it because <laughs> I saw the pictures and I'm like, what is this? And it was like the last day I ended up, as you, if you listen to the podcast, I couldn't find a hotel room on the southeastern side by the glacier. So I had to drive another five hours that day. And I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to go back to Reykjavik. And then I had like one day of not driving. It was like the best. I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. Like I'm not driving, I'm just hanging out. The city's pretty small. And so um, the last real day, I go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to head towards the lagoon and then I can come back into town, whatever. None of that was relevant. Probably could cut it all off. So... <laughs> You see this blue water, and it's like in these black lava rocks. And you're like, is this really like this sick? Is it, is it going to be this cool? And <laughs> it's this runoff from this geothermal plant. So then you're like, wait, is that? And I'm like, I guess it is cool. Like, I would imagine at this point they would have realized it if it wasn't safe. You're right. <laughs> and it apparently is. And so then I look on the website for how to book it, and it's like sold out for two months straight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Fuck. No chance. I'm like, okay, but one of one. Yep. yep. That's the great thing about traveling by yourself. It does get a little lonely. But <laughs> you can usually just show up to a lot of places and go, 
hey, it's just me. Although in France, <laughs> and I would put one other European country in it, they're almost so offended you're by yourself. You're yeah. like, wait, you waited to come to this really fancy restaurant and you're going to fucking sit here by yourself? Like, don't give him ice. <laughs> when he wants his check, never give it to you're him. You're really mad about this <laughs> yeah, ice right, thing, huh? Right, right. No, because there was a place, there was a place in, uh, in Nice, like the, the last night I went to dinner, I looked up this Italian place, and I was like, oh, this is the best Italian place in Nice. I'll go. And the guy brought me like large croutons instead of bread. I was like, are you guys serious with this? I was like, is this normally how the bread is handed out to people? And I like broke it apart like a piece of fucking Egyptian lore. <laughs> and the guy was like watching me break. It. He was like, oh, that's stale. I'm like, you think? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, he was like, how was the meal? I go, pizza was phenomenal. I go, the meatballs are frozen. Aren't they? And he was like, yes. I went, okay. Well, mm -hmm. you have your answer. Yeah. That's about there you how go. I felt the second part of it. All right, back to the Blue Lagoon. Yes, sir. This is it, the question was, is this your handwriting? <laughs> <laughs> so I walk in and it's packed. And I was like, I'm not getting in here. Walked up. There was a $75 package, $125 package, and a $500 package. And there was no one in line for the $500 package one. And I go up and I was like, can I just get one? She's like, you're by yourself? I was like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, it's like a heated bath. You're just going to walk around by yourself. It's a couple's massage. <laughs> yeah. yeah right, right. And I was like, you know my hot tub rule. If there's kids in the hot tub, you don't go in. Right. Yeah. yeah good old, policy. Old people and kids, if they're already in there, I don't get in the hot tub. Uh, I was like, no, I think it's just going to be me. She's like, okay, well, you have to shower first. I'm like, yeah, like I love showering. We're good. Like I think she was a little <laughs> thrown off. Like what's this guy's deal? So the credit card went through, so we're concerned. She just let me go through, roll in, and as I'm watching everybody, I'm like, is this a huge scam? It's just this big hot tub right. that we're all kind of in. But I guess that silica or whatever it is, you start wiping it on you. I took a shower later that day after workout. No big deal. Sort of high ripped it. And <laughs> after I showered, I still had that shit all over my body. Like I could just sort of feel it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then you're like different spots. It gets hotter. And you're like, wow, it's just randomly hotter in this area because of nature. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, and so, I went off to the side, sat by myself, and a lot of people looked at me like, hey, stay away from that. <laughs> what, what did you rate it on, on Google? Did you give it, like, I love those. When, I did. When people, like, rate the Grand Canyon on yeah. Google, they give it two stars. Yeah. It's not that grand. Line was yeah. kind of busy. Oh, you yeah. went July 4th? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I looked up Saint Tropez, and it said something like, unfortunately, not as many affordable food options. Like, you went to Saint Tropez. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, right. Like, you realized where you went, right? Uh -huh. Maybe the most expensive place you could go in Europe. And you're mad that there weren't more like burrito specials? Like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, that's mm -hmm. that's a you prop. Uh, yeah, I gave it, I think I rated it pretty high. And I said, go to the premiere line and then just say, you don't want that one. And then you cut everybody, which I don't really like line cutting, but in that time, I think it was justified. Yeah. yeah one of one. To. Um, all right. Let's do, before we do the Mount Rushmore, I have one last question. I have uh, one for you guys, though. Okay. Too. okay. All right. The rowback question RHOBACK.com. Use code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. Uh, Q zips, hoodies, polos roback.com promo code take for 20 percent off your first purchase give us your hottest nfl take before the season starts team player whatever you want what are you thinking no oh, man i was not prepared for this at you got all. something you're thinking about uh simeon replaces fields oh mm, that's hot Week you didn't seven. want to go with nathan peterman no, I just, I'm I got just trying, Peterman on there. I'm just trying to fuck with the guy. That was, Story's not done with yeah. Nathan Peterman. Yeah. I'm telling you. No, that not. guy, I actually wouldn't mind him just putting together a couple. He became like the absolute, like, this guy's got a job. You know, if well, I were that him, one half. Yeah. Like, we're all about mental health awareness, except for Nathan Peterman. Yeah. <laughs> just shit true. on him. Yeah. It's true. You know? It's very true. Like, hey, you know, here's my Instagram page. It's about yoga and mental awareness. and But fuck Nathan Peterman. <laughs> <laughs> You, so or, I have a question for you guys. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. So as I'm walking around Southern Coast, and I'm I'm looking at everybody, and I go, obesity doesn't seem to be an issue here. Mm -hmm. And Nice is a uh, is a melting pot. You look at it historically. I know PFD knows this. It's very Italian influenced. San Remo's. Yep, it's right, for Italy, right yeah. down the street. Barcelona's six hours away. Billy knows. And so <laughs> every day was like burrata, ham. Prosciutto, whatever you want to call it, baguette every every Baguettes afternoon out of yeah. just out of the woodwork, and the bread really is that good. Like it's you just so get a, good. You can just get a piece of bread, and walk around all day. It's a fucking it's bad. So good. I 
randomly got stuck at this lake because I couldn't find an Uber out of there. And some guy saw me walking like up a cliff with my luggage and he pulled over and was like, do you want to ride? And I just was like, yeah, sure, I guess so. But he wasn't going that far. But I looked down and in the storage of his back seat was just a loaf of bread. Fuck yes. Just it's insane. It's awesome. So, all right, pizza, fries. I don't like the way the French do the French fry thing, though, at all. They just like, it's almost like rice, like sushi rice. It's just around yep. and then they give it to you. Yeah. Like, no, we cook them. Yeah. And then yeah. we give them to you. It's yeah. Weird. And I'm looking at everybody vaping. There's babies sitting at these tables, just cigarette smoke right in their face. I can't imagine. I don't know what the vaping stuff I don't know the science behind it. Drinking, you're like, what's the life expectancy of the U.S. compared to France? Okay. So U.S. is what, like 77, 79? The one female? I, the one I found. Oh, oh, age. Yeah, very yeah. good, very good. It's uh, it's like seventy nine to eighty two. Okay, okay. male, female. Breakdown. I think I have an answer for this too. Okay. By the way, where do you think the United States ranks uh, among the hundred and ninety countries that I have in front of me uh, on life expectancy in the world? I'm gonna guess nineteen. I was gonna say like more in the forties. Forty nine. Wow. Ooh, I was almost said fifties. Now would have been closer. There's. The obesity issues. There's also lack of universal health care. Yeah, you know, OJ just, lives here. Yep, yep. That's true, a lot of factors. Man. But France is like top twenty. And then I landed on this theory, which I don't even know if it's right or not. But this is just what this podcast is about exploring. <laughs> is we still is, have our pants on? Right. This is it's been good so far. Although, is Ryan wearing pants? Oh, Ryan, yeah. If I can if, see Ryan's his balls. favorite thing to do is just to show <laughs> all of his balls to our audience. I didn't mean to this time. But it's I thought you were doing it as a bit. I yeah, thought you were like, okay, I'm going to wear a smaller pair of shorts than these, I did last time. No, my legs got bigger since the last time. Okay, so nice. the shorts, these okay. shorts are actually bigger, but okay. so are my legs. So Billy noticed. But uh, <laughs> it might just be that the food, even though you'd be like, you guys are just eating pizza and cheese and ham and everything over and over and over again, because every fucking restaurant the menu is almost the same, but because it's non-processed, yeah. is that what's going on? Because they're... They don't, the cigarette thing over there is out of control. America doesn't get enough credit for how much they've moved off of the cigarette. Yeah. Right. I have, a, I have one theory as well. I, I think vacation. They all take the fucking summer off. They're they happier. don't work. It's like Hollywood. Constantly. Like the fact that you're. Try Europe, to get a script made in July. Fucking too, forget about it. Everyone takes all of July. Is that, was that, was that, has that been the problem for you? That's yeah. That's it. I think <laughs> whatever it is, I was I was teeing you up there. I'm like, how have you not made fun of me yet on this one? Uh, but I I really do think that like the fact that the entire country takes two months off every year and it's like mandated, it like Hank's probably gonna outlive us because he takes vacation all the He's time. He's probably gonna move to Europe. Yeah, yeah I'm I, screwed. I think whatever yeah, it is, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, we that are. Makes, I still was putting out content while he, I was on vacation. Yeah. You know how like the, you guys the grapes over there are better. The the pigs are healthier. Everything's healthier. The the I think it's less processed food. I, I, I think you're I th right. I think it's that the same effects that are happening to the agriculture where you can get incredible grapes that make incredible wine. There's some of that that's also going into humans as they're over there. Yeah. The environmental factors. Billy's got an idea. I'm sure this will be Wait, do they snack though? Do they snack yeah, they there? Sa yes, they, they snack. don't snack. They I don't do snack. Think. They do I think snack. they just eat their meals. Healthier snacks though. I think they just eat the other thing I thought about when they never bring you a check, because they don't, I'm surprised I'm not still there waiting at this one place. <laughs> it may be because they're like, what's the rush? Right. Yeah, like, yeah they know they're relaxed. Do. Just yeah. chill out, man. Yeah. Why do you have to be so intense about everything? Like, yeah, you finished your meal and now, like, you know, sit down. Honestly, I think it's because our TV over here is so much better. Yeah, that too. It makes really us want sports. to spend more time on the couch watching TV. It makes us want to leave restaurants quicker. We don't allow time to digest properly. Because we're like, oh, we got to go home because there's this great show on. Yeah, that's about a cool that's, state in that's the United streaming States. Streaming that you can watch literally instantly. Anytime. And yeah. in in France, it's like, oh yeah, you know what? Let's stay another forty five minutes after dinner because uh, the best shows that I can watch on TV are all about like New York City. Right. So I don't there's really care about channels. it that much. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna get back to Ryan Rosillo in a second. Before we do, he's being brought to you by Whatnot. Whatnot is a live stream auction app where you can buy collectibles, comics, and really almost anything else. They bring businesses and people together through commerce where sellers can host live streams and engage connoisseurs like yourselves can bid in real time. With live streams happening 24-7, you never know what you'll discover. Barstool is going to be going live twice a week on Whatnot, running live shows, selling never-before-seen auction items, and Whatnot exclusives. My desk is getting pretty messy right now. I've got quite the pile going. I might contribute some things to the whatnot auctions. There'll be all sorts of stuff going up for sale. Some nice jerseys I've got over there. I was going through the pile the other day. I've got some real throwbacks in there. I've got, um, I actually have my DC Defenders uh, 
my tryout jersey back there. You can't get rid of that. You don't think so? No. No. Uh, you're right. I need it for this year's tryouts. Uh, but there are other stuff that we're going to be getting rid of. So check it out on Whatnot. Download the Whatnot app. Follow the Barstool Sports account at Barstool Sports and Whatnot. So you will be the first to get notified when we go live. Use the link in the description. Get 10 bucks off your first purchase on Whatnot. Check it out. Whatnot. Now here's more Ryan Rosillo. Billy. Do you want to? Go ahead, Billy. Sorry. I know that the pesticides, there's a lot more legal pesticides go. in Europe, and especially in the cigarettes. There's much more pesticides on American tobacco than European tobacco. That's Ooh. why there's not as high rates of uh, lung cancer. People like are just firing darts and vaping. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm talking like with kids. I saw an 11-year-old kid in Aix-en-Provence. He was the coolest fucking kid I saw all week. He was like 11, Hawaiian shirt fucking dart out of the side of his mouth it's awesome and he walked up to like two 13 year olds and was like who wants to fucking party and walk around <laughs> with me and i was like i hope that kid asked me to hang out with yeah. him yes. he's, he's unbelievable and i couldn't help but like be like i wish i smoked at 11 because look how awesome he looked yeah now, I, I, you see a kid that's 11 and he's like gesturing confidently with his cigarette that's hand. what he was doing yeah, yeah it was like incredible. don draper but 11 now if he had asked to hang out though would the 11 year olds that you have live in your house would that have been weird for them <laughs> Uh, when I had the 14 year olds live in my house, yeah. <laughs> uh, the cool thing was when the 14, when the dad was there, he was like, Hey, I'm going to go drink with some of the hockey players. And I was like, well, I'm going to hang out with the 14 year olds. And he was like, what? I go, well, I feel like I kind of got to hang out with them. If you have to like to go, you know, meet up the pro athlete, I got a bunch of friends in pro athletes, not a big deal. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, those guys, those guys moved on for me quick though. When they turned oh, fifteen, I, I like check. I like DM one of them, like, "Hey, what's up, buddy?" And it's mm-hmm. like fucking the weeks go by. You know, when you were in France, <laughs> did you get made real easily by the waiters and waitresses? Would they come over and bring you? They're like, "Oh, this is the American guy." Yeah. I I thought like there was one place I went to in Greece that was really nice. It was on the water. I sat by myself, and they were like, "What a loser!" Like, just fuck this guy. He's sitting there. They didn't even light the candle at the table. Like, I couldn't read. It was, like, dark, and I had to, like, turn my phone on to read. Maybe it was, well, no, I was younger then, so it wasn't an age thing. Uh, I, I I just think that the service is terrible. The yeah. service is terrible. Like, I think after, what, 20-plus meals, like, I think I have a good read on it. Yeah. I, I think the research would tell you is just the service is not what it is here. Yeah. yeah. The most insulting thing that happened to me when I was in France was I sat down at a table for breakfast. It's like this outdoor cafe. But you were standing? I snow. I sit down. <laughs> that was mean. That's See, mean. Yeah, but you meant it was an insulting thing that happened. To you. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I'm I'm five foot eight, Ryan. Got a problem got with that? I'm sorry. <laughs> if I if I could have willed my body to grow higher, I would have. You're not. Unfortunately, built I'm not. Yeah. So I have to love myself and my <laughs> body just the way hat. that I am. Built same. Built same. <laughs> built average. <laughs> so I sit down, and uh, the waiter comes over, immediately confiscates the French menu, hands me an English menu, and this is the worst part, they take the cigarette ashtray off the table. Mm. It's like, oh, this guy's American, he can't speak French, and he's not going to smoke, obviously. So I got up, and I went next door, and I bought a pack of cigarettes just to bring it back and start chain smoking. I'm like, bring that fucking ashtray back. <laughs> I'm going to smoke. I'm going to smoke in your restaurant. I like that. Yeah. I like that out of you. I was very yeah. insulted by it. Yeah. Almost as insulted as, as I was a second ago. You brought up my height. Yeah. That was mean. That's what I thought we were doing. Yeah. No, no we're not okay. doing yeah. who's the jerk. No, yeah. <laughs> My friend is five foot eight. <laughs> are you that's really? It. That's all I got. It would, it would, it would be. I, I, are you I really five foot eight? That would be the who's the jerk. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad. Trent Richardson jersey? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to the Hall of Famer. Famer. Yeah. He's a gold jacket. All right. Let's do the Mount Rushmore. All right. I'm taking my sweatshirt off. All right. I'm dying. So he's going to have a tank top on the YouTube. You're going to get to see even more. Oh, he's got something on underneath there. I don't. Oh, some Somebody. gnarly pit stains. Yeah, no, I'm pitting out bad. Um, okay, we're going to do the Mount Rushmore of mundane, everyday tasks that should be Olympic sports. We have four teams. Ryan, you're, you're with yourself. Uh, that sounds Kind of your right. thing, yep. Uh, Billy and Jake. We got the team producers, Batgirl and Memes, and then PFT and I. Um, Ryan, why don't you decide the order? So we're going four deep. Snake draft. Okay. Uh, Mount Rushmore of everyday activities that should be Olympic sports. PFT first because I feel bad. That's me and PFT. Oh, trying to break. You guys us can't up. do it on yeah. your own. Well, so, so only yeah. some people can host solo. <laughs> One uh, of many. That's me. <laughs> all right, you guys can go first. Thank you. Uh, Billy goes second, and then Jake. No, no, Jake and Billy are together. Okay. Oh, it's just three. 
It's four. It's four? Yeah, the producers. Can I do a worse job with this? Or yeah. Or you want to try it again and see if I can do it even worse? All right. I'll go last. So okay, it's, all right. It's so we'll go around guys, the room. Yeah, Billy, yeah. yeah, we'll go around the room. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, all right. Perfect. All right. 93 fish. Whew. All right. This is big, PFT. This is a big first one. So, I think the first one that I sent to First you, one is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Parallel parking should be an Olympic sport. Either you're good or you're bad, like when you're really good. And I, I don't like the – it is kind of a Mickey Mouse thing now with the, all the cameras. Mm -hmm. I never even use that stuff. I like never use it. they explain it when you're buying a new car and you're like, and if you hit this button, I'm like, fuck yeah. that. No, no, no. Yeah. Old school parallel parking, when you get it in one shot, best feeling in the world, especially when, like, if you're in a big city. The city? And people you have, it's like docking an audience. People yeah, watching yeah. and then cars mm -hmm. behind you. If you showed me parallel parking in the Olympics, I would watch it, and it would be so entertaining. So entertaining. The only thing it would be, I think it would be more entertaining to watch. It would be like American Idol. Like, I think I'd rather see somebody Regular who just people? has no chance. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just take some guy yeah. off the street, give him a, a, a manual transmission, yeah. too. Yeah. Just watch chaos ensue. Yeah. Manual transmission, yeah, that'd be tough. That'd be tough. You guys even know what that is anymore? No. Remember, remember the license to drive? You ever see that? What's that? Good movie. Check it out. What, what, year, what year was it made? 1950? Yeah, 51 maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Billy and Jake, you guys are up. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, we're going to go with carrying groceries. Yep. That's, uh -huh. That was on our list. That's a good one. It's, a, uh, it's an impossible thing that you always think that you can just like, I got it. I got it. And you always drop something. But, man, that's fun. And then you get up to the door and you're like, wait, I, I actually can't open the door now. Yeah. So you have to put it down anyways. I like when the circulation gets cut off in the yes, forearm. Yes. You know, and like that plastic CVS bag is just like cutting into you. I also like when you have so many groceries and then you have like the paper towels or the toilet paper and you and you and you put, poke your finger in the plastic wrapping so then you just have the toilet paper by one single finger. Yeah. It's the just towels. like yeah, and you're just like yeah. this with everything else. That's good. That's a great time. God, good pick. That's a really good one. Good pick. All right, back girl. Um, we're gonna go with holding in a shit when you don't have access to an easy bathroom. Ooh. Just not not using the bathroom. Texas poop cool. hold. Not soiling yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Texas poop hold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just really want to see Texas poop hold. This is what it is. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's. I mean, yeah. That's a very tough thing to do. Mm -hmm. Especially when you when you gamble. There's nothing worse than when you gamble on like uh, I got to go out for like an hour. And you're like, ah, I think I'm good. And then like 10 minutes into being out, you're like, oh, I'm not good. I did that today on the train. I got on New Jersey Transit, which we know they're incompetent, thanks mm -hmm. to Frank the Tank. And I drank a giant thing of water before I got, got on. And then I forgot that they don't have bathrooms on the oh. train. And so I'm just signing my own death warrant. It's yeah. like, okay, an hour and a half on this train. You better hold it That's an in. initiation some places to get in. Yeah. Just hang Do on exactly to it. Exactly that. Yeah. yeah. It's bad. It's bad. Okay. Ryan, you're up. You have two picks. I know. Um, everyday thing. I love my ability to be able to throw a towel into a bin. Ooh, oh, yeah. Okay. And especially like when it's, there's a little moisture on it. Yeah. And you have the weight right. And I have a little routine at the Equinox. Oh, you go to the gym? I do. And <laughs> I'll like, I'm getting out to like almost 20 yards. Ooh. Like it's, it, it's aggressive what I'm trying to pull mm -hmm. off. And it's a slot too right um but it's it's like flat so you have to kind of go in it's not like straight at you it's on it's top like playing of like bags. a surface yeah, yeah yeah but i will i'm like out there these are like routes and i have it and i when i hit it i like look around to be like did anyone see me do that do you and yell I, anything you're like kobe or anything i've had a couple where i was like holy shit man that was good <laughs> and then you're like you're the biggest loser ever because you just said that out loud but you I really love that. I'd like to see other people just randomly, like when I get a yeah. chance to throw something into something, I'm yeah. like, I love this. And I yeah. watch it. I'm, I'm like automatic that. on socks into the laundry yep. bin, like in my apartment. The towel thing is tricky because in, in the gym, you might have like a bathroom attendant that's walking around the corner and you're shooting from like 20 yards away and you just hit him with and, the towel. And it's got to be, it's got to be gym towels because gym towels are always a little thinner. You yeah. know, and I mean, because you can't weight. do the big ones yeah. that you have at home. The AC's blowing. Who yep. knows? You get caught up in <laughs> some sort of dust. The elements. <laughs> yeah, but I like. That's a good pick. Yeah, I, I've just noticed that I'm like, you keep trying to see where this is going to go. All right. Uh, I'm trying to think which ones I think you guys will take. Uh, 
versus which ones I think are available. All right, I'll just go with it. Uh, stopping the gas pump yep, on yep. a dollar. We yep. had that. We had it. Yeah. Yep. I That's- love it. I'll start going to 97, 97, and then it's like, boom, right off. When I'm locked in, I feel great. Yeah, some people will say, well, you don't need to do that anymore because it's not the 90s. But to them, I say I still do that at a gas pump just because it's cool to see it stop on that perfect Yeah, yep. in Iceland, you have to tell them ahead of time how much you want to pump. Really? So, yeah, I mean, it's a pain in the ass. But a lot of people don't know that. It's not as many people travel. <laughs> okay, Billy. Is it harder Jay. to do that now that you know gas prices with Joe Biden are just like through the roof? <laughs> There's a lot of factors, PFT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Name two of a, them. It's not just our leadership. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Batgirl, you guys are up. Good picks. Um, we're going to go with timing commercials. Ah, mm. that was also on our list. Yeah. Yep. We had yeah, that one too. too. That's a great one. I, I have three TVs, so I don't have to deal with that anymore, but I still think I could. I like when people are like, oh, you're watching yeah. the, the Blue Jays <laughs> and you're not watching the Titans. Yeah. yeah. I always, I like, tweet him a picture. I, when people say yeah, that to it me, should be everyone, I tweet a picture. Yeah. Everybody on the content side should just start being like, do you guys seriously think we have one fucking TV yeah. in our room? It's just like, I, I, people always be like. You're watching playoff hockey instead of playoff basketball, and I tweeted a picture of all three games on. I'm like, what are you going to do now, dude? Yeah, suck it. Yeah, it's a nice flex. It's I the think best wh- if you if it's NFL Sunday and you've got Fox on one, or you got Fox on your TV, and you also check back on this the CBS game, and you hit it right as they're snapping yep. the ball on first down. Yep, it's such a good feeling. Yeah. Okay. Good pick, Billy and Jake. We're going to go with pissing, aiming, and distance. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Piss Olympics would be very fun to watch. Shit. Who, who can piss the farthest? Yeah. Ooh. Who's got the best accuracy? Yeah, McC- yep. McConaughey was saying in his book that like his dad and him used to have contests not for distance, but for height. They would see who could pee up the highest yeah. on the wall. Yeah. I think he said that his dad could pee up like eight feet. That's eight feet? Yeah. Crazy. That's not that crazy. That's crazy. How, it isn't? Billy, you know, I think how I far can, make, can you? <laughs> I think I can make my piss. Go outside and piss in the hallway. Try it. it. Yeah, right. dude, we gotta do it. Go do it right. I think you could piss. I think you could piss in the hallway at no, this office why, and no one notice. Go see. No, well, I gotta piss for. I gotta have to pee first. Uh, right. Okay. Okay. So drink some water. Okay. All right. I think I could get piss on the, on the ceiling. I think I could hit the ceiling. I don't think I could. I don't. Pissing on the ceiling. Uh, cover without a whip <laughs> though. You can't whip. You can't whip. Yeah, that we're talking. I, yeah, because wh- a whip is a. I could piss on the ceiling with a whip. We're talking prostate only. Yeah, yeah. You're I just, think I you're just power just it. raw power. Yeah, maybe you know what? Maybe maybe now that I think about this, maybe eight feet isn't that impressive. Not laying. It down. It sounds impressive. Like I kind of want to see you up. try to. Pee I definitely don't ceiling. think they were laying down. <laughs> now I got to see Billy pee lying down. <laughs> straight laying, up into the air. Billy, I don't. Straight, just power. Standing, standing. Maybe power. Billy's right. Yeah. I know mean, we got to see it now. Oh, fuck. I'll do it in the bathroom. Okay. Great. Yeah. Just like mark it on the wall. Do it in the corner. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me you can do it wherever you want. It's a good experiment. I yeah. like this. Drink up. I want to see who can piss the farthest. Yeah, this is the Olympics. Um, okay, good pick. All PFT, right, where do we want to go? Yeah, this is a tough one because they took two of ours. Yeah. Um, I, I like the second to last thing that I sent you um, in that big block. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah, and I like the one above it, too. So why don't you go with the second last one and I'll go with the one or the one two above it. Okay. Yeah. Um, hitting every light in a row. Mm-hmm. Oh. Seeing how many you can get. The yeah. best. It's awesome. Is Riding the wave. When you really know an yes. area too and you're like, if I get this one, yep. that means. Well, yep. You can sometimes go like the entirety of Manhattan in like 10 minutes if you hit because we when we're never, he, I've never had a moment like that. When we hit when we work late here on Sunday nights and we like go home at like two o'clock. I've rode the wave a couple times and it is such a thrill. There's you just uh, hit one and you're like, I'm good for the whole way home. There's this road in, in D.C., Constitution Avenue. And if you hit it perfectly, if you get to that first light just as it's turning green, so you see it turn from red to green, you know that you can drive all the way from the bridge past Congress. No stops whatsoever. And then you get towards the end, and by the end you're running like – Kind of running a red light or two. It's you're barely making the end of that yellow. Well, Congress light. is never doing yeah. anything. Yeah, Congress won't yeah. do shit about it. No. But uh, it's Steal it's exhilarating. Money. It's such a good feeling because you know that you're about to have the best drive ever. Yeah, um, I'm just right. get excited thinking about it. It's it's. I want to rent a best. car. Um, all right, our next pick is going to be now. This one I actually think like you could actually really have a great competition. You have everyone is laying there sleeping, and it's who can wake up before the alarm closest to the alarm, because God damn, does that happen every fucking day? And everyone thinks, like, I'm the best at always waking up a minute before my alarm. And having people try to wake up 
as close to their alarm as possible. Billy, this probably doesn't count for you. Uh, before their alarm hits, what a, what a thrill that would be. What is that? How come we haven't unlocked what that brain power it's is? It's crazy. That when you go, hey, I'm going to set my alarm, and then I'm going to wake up. And like, I can't believe how often I wake up right before the alarm. So Every day. Why are we man. not untapping what that ability is and applying that to more things? It's just your rhythm. The Olympics. Why your, aren't your we seeing who's clock. the best? I was talking to a security guard one time. This story blows my mind. That, that Humble this, brag. No, that this dude, is he is built different. He was telling me he wakes up every morning at 4 a.m. He has never used an alarm. He wakes up at 4 o'clock in the morning every single day. He doesn't obviously have a snooze button, but he says sometimes if I'm feeling tired, I'll wake up at 4 and then I'll close my eyes and I'll count to 60 seven times in a row and then I'll open my eyes again. That's my snooze button. <sighs> Fucking maniac. Did that's you have on macro dosing? What the fuck are no, you talking about? No, he's, just a, he's, a, he's a psychopath. That's crazy. Yeah. I had one moment that I still don't really explain other than my content brain just overpowers my life. I was in France. It was whatever it was, 2018, 2019, when LeBron signed with the Lakers. So it's like three or four in the morning. I woke up out of a deep, deep sleep out of nowhere. Just woke up, looked at my phone, stared at my phone. 20 seconds later, the Woj alert happens. LeBron signs with the Lakers. I still don't know how that happened. And I spent the next three hours just tweeting. It, you know, in the middle of the night <laughs> from France. And I was like, what's going on with my brain? It was crazy. I watched it, like, I watched the alert go on my phone. That's weird. It was weird. It was very, very eerie. I mean, obviously, we knew he was going to sign somewhere that week, but still. It was fun. It, yeah, it, no, it, that's not what you're saying. Yeah, it like, made me realize, like, maybe I should take a break. about yeah. everybody knew he was going to the yeah. Lakers. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It was fucked up. No, I've been having a lot of this stuff. Like, there was this, this guitar player... That uh, I just recently started teaching myself how to play guitar. Really? And, yeah, but I not a midlife play. crisis for anyone who's gonna say that in the comments. No, I've always wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but it's uh, the boat that you bought too. Well, it's an investment. <laughs> it's an investment. Sorry, MMA I'm getting you back for the PFT. The MMA class has been great though. <laughs> you brown belt now? <laughs> you know, my dojo. We don't really <laughs> like to categorize. You know, everybody knows who's who. Yeah, we don't, Ryan is, we don't need a belt to fucking prove it. You have Ryan. many, many black listen, belts, many instructors. Listen, it's like the nuts. We're not making fun of Ryan. If you want to see a sick rendition of Hotel California on his newly purchased boat, he will be ready in about a month. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, babe. So, hey, babe. You know I play the guitar. <laughs> what's that like when you get a guitar at this age? Because when when you there's learn, a very specific style that I'm trying to teach myself. Yeah, there's certain songs that like this isn't Hotel you can't California. you can't just do like the beginner stuff. What are you right? doing? Finger picking? Yeah, you're not playing John you, Fahey. As a man, you can't pick up a guitar and be like, I'm learning this, and then th your first instruction is like, Mary had a little lamb. No, no, I'm watching these finger picking videos, and I'm teaching myself how to do it. And so far, so good. <laughs> uh, I'm classically trained, so just have the ear. And what? I have the ear. Choir. Okay. You know that? No. Yeah. So, uh, really? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, whose pick is it? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, the point is that I was reading the Led Zeppelin biography, which is actually more of a bummer than it is. It's a good book, but it's a bummer. Those guys kind of suck. And uh, then you, they were talking about how Jimmy Page was, like, as I was thinking about John Fahey, they mentioned how Paige was obsessed with Fahey as I was doing it. That's the worst Whoa. story I've ever told in the podcast. No, no. I liked it's, it. It's the same That's the universe. It's the same thing, bro. Right. I was like, how insane is it that this very, I bet you 99.9% .9 of the people listening are like, who are you talking about? Don't mm -hmm. even worry about it. And when I was, I was thinking about him as I was reading the book, because I was like, oh, I got to figure out this new part. It's been really hard. And then I was like, that's insane that that just happened. It's, mm -hmm. it's the moments that you're like, are we living in a simulation? Yeah. And the alarm clock. Good pick, Jake. It'd be fucking great. Oh, I, 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 had a, I had a fucked up alarm thing happen to me two weeks ago. This is this is fucking. Remember insane. the day we thought you died? Yeah. Oh yeah. There's that, that one. Up. So we one, actually, I actually thought. PSG so was dead. one day I forgot to set my alarm, and I just slept, and I just didn't stop sleeping. Usually I wake up even if I don't have an alarm. I wake up at like nine, ten a.m. Whatever. Uh, I just slept until about noon. Maybe it was twelve thirty. I had to be on the radio at eleven a.m. So I slept all the way through that. People thought I was dead. Big yeah. Cat thought that I was dead. I was dead. like, he might be dead. I woke up, you look at your phone, and it's just like a text message of, uh, from everyone that you know in your life being like, are you okay? Are you okay? And then you feel like a piece of shit. But I didn't do anything wrong. I just like slept too long one day. Right. I came into work, and everybody was like, 
PFTs on drugs. Yeah. You know, like they're, everyone's very concerned about me. And I'm like, I swear to God, I literally just slept. That's all that happened to me. But um, that's not the crazy alarm story. The crazy alarm story is I set my alarm like this. Is, I know about a month ago uh, because I have to get breakfast. I'm in a hotel. I have to get breakfast before I get on the cab that takes me back to the airport. It's taking a bunch of people back from the airport. So um, in order to do that, I have to order my room service an hour before I wake up because it takes them forever. Damn, that new so, contract is really so, nice. So I set my alarm. Yeah, first world problems. Man. Yeah, so I set my <laughs> alarm, and uh, as I'm setting it to 6 a.m., the label on the alarm just pops up because I had just said to my friend, I was like, I got to set my alarm for 6 a.m. so I can remember to order room service before I actually have to wake up. I set it to 6 a.m., and the title of the alarm is Order Room Service. Mm. Automatically. Pre-programmed into my phone. I swear to God, I, I stopped. Jobs. I stopped and Jobs. I showed it to everybody. I was like, "You guys are witnesses. This, yeah, it just heard me say this." That's Steve Jobs, and it automatically programmed my phone. That motherfucker's all up in our ass. Yeah, the phone stuff is. Uh, there's too many times where something happens. I go, "This sucks, man." Yeah, yeah. they know everything. They make it too easy. All right, Jake and Billy. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go with uh, stopping the microwave before it beeps. Right? Oh. Zero. Yeah, that's a good one. I saved my seconds. Yeah, you got to you reuse. Save your seconds. Well, what what will happen is you get down to like one second, you stop it, and then you put the food in the next time you use it, and you just click plus one minute, plus one minute, plus mm-hmm. one minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another thing a guys will do is they'll use the wrong numbers just to keep the keypad fresh. Mm. You ever heard that one? No. no. That's no, a lot of like guys? One, zero, zero, or whatever, or 90, be like, if I can throw an 84 on this. <laughs> So that you don't wear down yeah. the yeah. ones. Now, yeah. when you say a lot of guys, <laughs> yeah, not many, not many. Okay, got it. Okay. That's actually <laughs> almost no one. That's somebody, actually genius. Yeah, no. Somebody showed it to me once, and they were like, "Oh, I'm like, what? You just typed in one twelve, yeah. or whatever." Actually, that wouldn't be a good example. But like, yeah, instead of ninety seconds, it was like eighty six. And he's like, "Yeah, he keeps keep the keypads fresh." <laughs> <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> yeah. uh, it ups, like, uh, it ups my, the resale value. My fucking one is down again. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta call my uh, my one guy out here. All right, Batgirl, Team Batgirl. Some good picks. We're gonna go with uh, getting out of small talk. Ooh. Ooh, what's your move? I would not be participating in this Olympic event, <laughs> but I would like to watch other people participate yes, in this yes, Olympic event. Yes, that's a, that mm-hmm. would be actually. Awesome to watch. Just put them in a situation where it's like a really bad coworker that you have to like walk to work with and yeah. figure out a way like, oh, I got to go get a cup of coffee or, yeah. or, some, or some sort of situation where. Yeah, the most seamless. And we could have it be like ice skating with yes. judges. Yes. yes. Uh, yes. I know I know who will win the gold medal because he did it to me. Who? The Miz. Oh. oh. Really? Yeah. One of the biggest dick moves I've ever had anybody <laughs> do to me in my entire life. Espy's party. You know, I'm with Chris Long. I'm with like other dudes i think glazer was with us. i think we had a ufc dude that was with us i think jules was with us like it wasn't like the crew was a bunch of milk carton guys right, right? and Miz was there and i was like oh hey what's up he's like oh, we, we've done this before <laughs> i was like what he's like yeah this whole thing like hi i'm you and i'm i'm me yeah we've done this pal like we don't need to do this again <laughs> and i was like that's the biggest fuck you i've ever gotten from anyone in any i had never met him before ever mm-hmm. like i never was on any of those tv shows the whole time it, that guy would be phelps yeah He'd it's incredible phelps. well that would be an he interesting straight up judge. to my face was like yeah yeah, we, yeah pal we're good so uh, we've fucking done this before y- you would get like great scores for for the quickness but the tact you'd lose points on if it was an olympic event i didn't want to talk to him I mean, we, he got out of that conversation pretty quick fast, after that. Fast. I mean, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe yeah. if it was a gymnast, it would be like yeah. that routine wasn't the hardest, but damn, it was efficient. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, the German yeah. judge gives you high marks on that one. Yeah. yeah. Did the you, dismount. in that moment, did you like blame yourself? Were you thinking, well, I must be just no fun to talk to? Or were you cognizant of the fact that that's weird? He's being a dick. I was like, fuck him. Yeah. I was, I was not thrilled. Yeah. But. Then, like, when it's one of those guys, you're kind of like, all right, what are you going to really do about it? Like, it's the Miz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Although, I don't know, you know. So, But I, well, I was I was like. Oh, wait, wait. Was that? Was yeah. that I don't know, like, you could take him? Yeah. Why would you put a cap on yourself? <laughs> right? Why would you have a salary like, cap? I don't know. Any- if shit went yeah. down, like, yeah. it's not it's not guaranteed. Yeah, right. I mean, I know what the line would be. But, you know, don't put a salary cap on any part of your life. <laughs> Douglas B. Tyson. Shit happens. Yeah, what if I had a bad week? What mm-hmm. if I was super mad about something else in my life? Yeah. You know? Uh, you have two picks, right? You have your last two. 
Uh, I can't believe this one hasn't been taken yet because it would be a, both be fascinating and you would learn packing. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. great one. I great suck pick. at it still. Great mm -hmm. pick. Do you always forget something or There's do you always overload? one thing yep. that I'm like, and then as soon as I come back from the trip, it's on the bed. Yep. Yeah. Every time. I've been They'll forgetting be... underwear. Like I'll I forget a whole pants. Yeah. Like I put all the, I think these, these luggage containers, like you, everybody buys them going, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. And know what ends up happening is I leave one. And then, like, I did a trip the other time. I was like, you left all the pants in that one cube. You have no <laughs> fucking pants the whole week. You're not yeah. going to have any pants. So that's yeah. why I wear the short shorts. It's not about my legs. <laughs> it's just about packing. So that's a great pick. I forgot pick. my pants for the yeah. seventh consecutive trip. Great yeah. pick. Great pick. <laughs> Would love to watch Last the one. Olympics. Last one. Yep. Beach umbrella installation. Yes. Ooh, yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Ryan. I, that's a big problem facing Americans mm -hmm. today. Beach umbrellas, we're getting lax with it. Because when somebody's really good at it, you're like, wow. That's incredible. That guy's yeah. put some umbrellas in the beach. Yeah. yeah. You got to do the twist thing first, yep. and then you build it from the ground up. Yep. And, they can and get... where to put it? You got to place it in the right spot. Like, yeah. there's a bad spot to put it where you're too far away from the people. Yep. Somebody died this weekend in South Carolina because a beach umbrella got blown out of the ground, and it stuck into somebody and killed oh, them. Man, and so badass. anytime I see the beach umbrella RIP. flying badass down the bad. beach, I'm badass. like... There, there should be a rule Bummer on the beach. Podcast. If your umbrella gets blown out of the sand, doesn't matter if it hits anybody. If you lose control of your umbrella, you're kicked off the beach yeah, for the rest of the day. You're banned. You're out. You get ejected. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's like a home. different category of it. Yeah. Like there's speed installation, and then they'd have to do some. It's in a wind tunnel. Stuff. Yeah, but then, yeah. Yeah, but then it's like, hey, instead of a medley. Wind tunnel day. Yes. Yeah. And yes. it's just guys out there hoping yes. it holds up. Yeah. Yes. Then you got to play the wind angles. You get a little geometry involved. Maybe have it, maybe have one of the competitions be like you have to put the beach umbrella in when it's cloudy and then the sun comes out. Did you put it in the right place? Mm. I like that yeah. one. Yeah. So do you do it like you're saying you're really good at the speed? No. I Once I learned that like rounded thing. Yeah. And then it's like. Wait, do that again? You're drilling it now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like that? Yeah. We're this gonna like don't worry. We're turning. gonna blur your legs out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Just the, whole, just the whole bottom yeah. of half of you is blurred. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I wouldn't say I'm great at it. You yeah. Know? Uh -huh. I mean, there's some of these things I just want to be better. Yeah. These, at. Yeah, okay. these yeah. are things you want to watch right. too. Right. If this would have been like the Olympics thing of like me. It would have been forgetting names. Right. Yeah. I would. <laughs> nobody forgets a name faster than yeah. I do. I've tried those tricks. No, like they don't work. Because the other thing, too, it's like some of the tricks is like you're supposed to look at somebody's face. And I, I'm like bad with this. If you have a really aggressive, weirdly placed mole, I'm going to look at it the whole fucking time. Mm -hmm. I can't stop looking at it. But they'll tell you to do that to remember names. Be like, hey, you know, look at somebody's face. And then I'm like, what? If, wait, wait. Like, I don't know. When people that can remember names, that fascinates it's me. It's also just a shit show when like we were on Grit Week and there's there was nine of us and we'd show up somewhere. And there'd be like, you know, three or four dudes would be like, hey, what's up? And we go down the line. It's like none of us remember any of our names. Like, you know, when you do like the big meet and everyone's like, hey, I'm here. Oh, you're saying they don't remember your name. No, no. Like I we can't remember theirs. We're meeting like four or five guys. They're meeting nine guys like. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's just right. a fucking mess. Like, why do we even do it? All right. Uh, Batgirl. Last pick. Last pick. Another one. I'm kind of surprised. Hasn't been picked yet, especially you. You talk about this a lot. Big uh, Cat uh -oh. putting a cooler together. Ah, yeah. Packing a cooler would be good. Packing a cooler would be very good. Is that kind of like talk about that a lot? The tortilla, I've tortilla soup thing, though. What do you mean? Why is packing a cooler? Is it under the packing umbrella or is it? Oh, you think that you're calling just, a flag I'm on asking, them? I'm just asking for clarification. Whoa, whoa! You're I think, no, it's, com it's, Matt, it's a completely Matt, different art. Yeah, I mean, Matt, uh, completely uh, different. Uh, art. The Max, cooler is an art. Don't let yeah, Ryan yeah, I mean, shame yeah. you. No, no, that's, no. I just uh, that's for the that's listener. That's uncouth. That's for the listener. That's not for me. Very yeah. uncouth. Yeah. I'm, I, and I will defend that to the death. Yeah. Right. There's a there's a definite method to packing a cooler. You got to yes. go I'm ice. I'm with Product ice. I retract the inquiry. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Good pick, Max. Good pick. I think you guys are overselling it now, though. Great pick it, steal the draft. Uh, all right, Jake and Billy, last one, and then we have our last one. Our last pick is jaywalking, running through traffic. Oh, that's a good one. Real life Frogger. This is a game I used to play with my friends, uh, just running across the street trying to avoid getting hit by cars. <laughs> it was the Fun best game. rush. Of that's a great my game. Life. Uh, and I think it would be a great Olympic sport. Also, high stakes. Yeah. High viewership. Really yeah. high stakes. Very yeah. high stakes. Yeah. Maybe have it like during the 400 meter dash. You have to try to run between the runners that are running <laughs> during mm -hmm. the Indy 500. Yeah, good pick. And style points for like going in between close cars. What's your closest call? Uh, 
<laughs> have you been hit by a car oh, doing this? The hood of a the hood of a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of really. Cool. It was a. It was like one of those to- small Toyota ones. Oh, it was. It wasn't that big of yeah. a taxi. You would have. You would have. I mean, you got hit by a car doing this. <laughs> That's yeah, what you I mean, said. Got, yeah. It, we it was a Corolla. It was, yeah, it was Corolla. It was like <laughs> you jumped onto the the hood. It was. It was. What the driver say? He yelled at me in some foreign language. I don't remember. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm elite at moving through well through crowds, but that's yeah. a little different of a. Very good. At it. You've always yeah. been good at it. Always been good at it. That was right. the hot soup thing. All right. Yeah. Hot soup. Yeah. Exactly. Callback joke. That's Titus's thing. I'll tell him that you ripped that off. Um, okay. <laughs> Last pick for us. PFT, what do we want to do? So I'm looking at yours. I, I kind of like the second one that you sent me because I had something similar to that. But. Which which pointed to me in your the first thing the, okay the, the second first line. block of text the second line is good there I also like the one that was right before the hitting every light in a row okay so either one of those two mm. Mm. Whew. okay yeah let's go let's go with the the phone one okay is that what you're talking about yeah 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 uh, saving your phone from being smashed with your feet. Just breaking the fall a little bit. Just, just, just that one little extra. Ooh, you get a toe on it, and everyone has to deal with it because everyone drops their phone. But the event's two a.m. Yeah, yeah, right. You're drunk, and there's no case. It's always no case. No case. Never. No case. No, no. Ever. Rookies, rookies. Yeah. These cases. You or or it could be. Yeah, I would. Are you kidding yes. me? Yes. It's a, you it's wouldn't. A, you wouldn't watch someone like like fumbling with their phone and trying to save it. They can. They have to use only their feet. You'd have like fucking Messi would win the gold medal, right? Be if Messi were bad at it, it'd be like one of the most disappointing things yeah, ever. Yeah, it would be. Ever. Yeah. Ever. You wouldn't watch it? You want to just yeah, see people I, get hit by cars? That <laughs> is a spectacle. <laughs> That's an Olympic sport. <laughs> okay, someone, if you don't like the pick, you don't like the pick. That's fine. Someone jumps over a car? Well, yeah, that'd like be cool to avoid too. It? Yeah, yeah, but it was also every, everyday activities, right? Like everyday activities. Like, right. are you always avoiding Jaywalking car, cars? Enough. Yeah, I mean, you're always jumping from the subway? I just follow... I follow the fucking. Well, sometimes signs. you take chances. You know, it's like it's yeah, a no, ride, but no one's coming all the time. Then all a car the turns in. New York does have the best jaywalkers in the world. Oh, yes, yes, they're very aggressive. If you go to Williamsburg, people just walk in the street, and it's just like, what's going on here? Yeah, I don't know what's going on with it because I, when I was, uh, when I was in Europe, people were like, I just got back. Um, <laughs> they don't give a shit. I'm surprised you don't have an accent. You should do a pod uh-huh. with that. Start saying cheers. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. I asked a guy a question in French once when he was from the Expos, and the other two co-hosts were like, fucking loser. <laughs> just like, you're the worst. And I was like, all right, you know what? Noted. So I don't uh, I don't break that out. I'm not very good at it anymore anyway. Uh, we have honorable mentions. Do you have anything you... you we, no, we I'm missed? just excited to hear yours. Okay, we got... I got a couple... One that I don't think it could really be an Olympic sport, but I know that I'm very good at it, and I, so I don't know how you'd actually make the like sport... But eating all all the popcorn and snacks before the, the movie starts. I don't know like how you would because then it would just be a Joey Chestnut situation. But if you could figure out a way to make it a natural competition, it'd be fun to watch. Like, oh shit, this guy's got like the pace. There's only one preview left and he's like almost done. Would so, you always know, I imagine? I think you could you could pull it off as long as the people didn't know that didn't they were know, competing. Right, right. Because I would be I would I would win the gold in that. Do you eat all your popcorn before the movie Every starts? Every fucking last bite. And all this, all the candy too. Yeah, popcorn is weird. Where you're just like, oh, so I'm just not gonna stop. <laughs> yeah, for right. Twelve ever, minutes straight. Ever. Yeah. Like, is popcorn bad for you? Eh. I feel like it's good for you. Well, I think it's if fruit, you just go, right, Billy? Fruit, yeah. yeah, it's fruit. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, if you leave all the stuff off of it, I think you're fine. I yeah. Don't salt intake. If you did it all the time, probably wouldn't be great. But the, the other one I had, um, I had two others that are specific. Uh, knowing the moment a bet is 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 lost. PFT and Hank have always said that I have great ability of that. Of like doing the math in my head and being like oh no yeah if we don't score here in like the third quarter we're fucked yeah he's always like two steps ahead of where my brain is i'm like okay we're about to get a touchdown here then they'll probably have enough time before halftime to kick a field goal but then big cat's already running through the third quarter implications yeah. of this. and i'm just like no, no no if we don't get seven here we're done you're also very good at at watching sports yeah and by that i mean like we'll have the entire wall of tv set up and I'll have a soccer game that I'm betting on or a hockey game, and I'm paying more attention to all the other things. And within probably half a second of a goal being scored, Big Cat will be like, goal. Yeah. He just knows it when it happens. Yeah, you know what is kind of like that, it, but it's it's also different, is watching football with Stanford Steve. 
if you were like, oh, hey, that was to, you know, uh, that was, well, Thielen and Jefferson would be a little tough to confuse. Uh, if you if you were watching a game and you are like, oh, who had the score on that? And then if you had it wrong, he'd be like, no, it was Ertz. And you're like, what? And he'd be like, it was Ertz on a slant. And then you're like, okay. And then I'd be like, oh, shit, was that the same guy? He's like, that was 22, that's 24. And you're just like, Jesus. Like, the guys that played football yeah, or yeah, coached, yeah. The, the way Billy knows, um, <laughs> the way they identify the things that happen in sequence, it's a completely different yeah, level. Yeah, of Edelman and Amendola. Yeah. That yeah. kind of mix up. Um, That's a good one. Yeah. Because they're this, both stout. This yeah, one, though they play yeah. scrappy. Right. right. Uh, this one people will probably make fun of me for, but I am incredible at uh, keeping a cone clean, ice cream cone. Yeah, that, that kind of, you know, I was just in Europe. That would come in handy there. People yeah. love gelato. And is yeah, it oh, everywhere? Are they making a mess or are they keeping it clean? It's great c- cone maintenance. No, I was watching a couple kids eat their cones, and it was just awesome to see the selfishness of like a seven-year-old with mm-hmm. a cone. He's like, I'm making a mess. I'm getting it everywhere. And if this goes bad, I'm going to demand another one. Yeah, yeah. right. And I'm going to get clean. Like, someone's going to come clean me up after this. Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. you have to clean me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I had taking a clean shit. Mm-hmm. So, like, fewest amount of toilet paper swipes used. That would be a weird one to watch. It's, yeah, it, but yeah, it's, uh, watch that one. that's one that's best on the radio <laughs> or on StatCast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't watch that, but... Uh, but yeah, someone... Yeah. Germans probably would. But like would. the cleanest... Germans, yeah. yeah Germans love, would, love, love, they love the word shit. No, There's I think like they... 50 versions. The Germans want the messiest shit. Yeah, they That's want the shit on the into. chest. Uh, I had... Oh, you're talking like videos. Yeah. yeah. I, Michael Lewis wrote about it in Boomerang, where he talked about the German thing, and he was like, their fascination with the word shit is hilarious. Yeah. What yeah. is that about Germans? I don't know. I've been there, though. Oh, I'll yeah. Nice. About, I'll you're tell you about it. You're very worldly. Yeah. I had cooking the perfect steak. Without you know using internal thermometer, just knowing off the sizzle of the pan. Yeah. Actually, you asked like what the fights that we've gotten in on this podcast. The fight over medium rare plus is probably the most. <laughs> but it's only you, your serious side. fight. Yeah. See, it's, it's starting it's again. Very one side. It's starting again right now, Ryan. Uh, if you're out to dinner with the boys, hang yeah. out just chilling again, with the fellas. This is only on PFG. Just chilling, side. chilling with the boys, and um, somebody at the table orders a medium rare steak, and then the person next to him says, "Can I have a medium rare plus steak?" What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, look, I guess you could say technically it is a different temperature. I would say most people, like, if you put down a plus and a medium rare in front of them, most people are never going to know the difference. Yeah. Interesting. I Whenever I go to a nice steakhouse, I don't like when they do. I always think medium rare, they always cook it a little bit closer rare. to rare. Yeah, and I like right. it a little bit more. And PFT doesn't like people to just live their life. No, it doesn't just, bother him whatsoever. I, as someone that's worked in a restaurant, I, I sympathize with the waiter. It has nothing to do with it. You just don't. You, you, I think it has to do with the fact that people have told me I'm right, and you don't like that. No, that, I, that's why, because I know yeah. I know what it's like from that side of the house. You, could, you, you work in a I steakhouse? You know what I like, like about anything, though, is oh, I don't like anybody fucking with how you want to eat. C- thank okay? you. So I'm thank sorry. You. But like mm-hmm. Cowherd, I don't know if you guys know him, agile, sinewy, yeah. physically. Yeah. Uh, he would he would always he did like a rant once he's like don't be change your order guy and i was like what and we started he goes if there's a salad and you know you don't want to just pick them off I'm like or i could just ask you to not have fucking onions right because onion taste is still going to be on there Thank if you. i have to pick it off the whole time mm-hmm. coward also once made a point about you shouldn't ever check a bag which some people believe in but I'd be like, well, what if you're gone like a certain <laughs> yeah. number of days? Yeah. Like, you got to check a bag. He'd be like, just buy new clothes and then mail them home. I'm like, well, wait, wait. <laughs> you think the solution <laughs> of the efficiency of not checking a bag is solved by buying new clothes on the road and then mailing them? <laughs> or you have seven people that work on the show that are always mailing your stuff. That's, yeah. that's the ultimate checking a bag is buying new clothes and then making a special trip to UPS to send your clothes yes. home separately. Yeah. But I, I, I tip well. I always I never like am mean to waiters. I ask for a steak a certain way. I don't think it's a big deal. The uh the coward thing also strikes me as he probably oh, went on vacation with, with his wife and he just got mad because he had to wait at baggage claim with her. He's like, We could have been home by now. Yeah, he had this massive baggage claim thing and then he had this don't change the ingredients when you order at a restaurant. And I, <laughs> I like stopped him in the hallway to be like Dude. I've never disagreed more. <laughs> yeah, about, right. Like, why, if I have the option to take something, like, why would I want stuff on it that I don't want right. on it that mm-hmm. I now have right. to, like, add this I don't level. want sardines on my Caesar salad. I, uh, I, I ate at a restaurant on Europe Friday, a lot, though, and yeah. right on the menu it said, we kindly decline 
all substitutions or modifications. Like right on there. It was a is the nicest rejection I've ever had. Hey, look, when sometimes you do those those packages of food, I'm like, I kinda don't want that dessert. Yeah. Though. So well, you know, do I say something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, any other honorable mentions? Anyone else? Spitting. Ooh. Nice Ooh, one. Spitting. I like yeah. that. That's good. I had one parent one and it it would be fun to watch be dangerous, but I do think the ability to just know the second that one of your small children is about to do something very dangerous on the stairs is a it would be a fun Olympic sport to watch because it's just it's an innate parent. They fall thing. down a lot, huh? Yeah, and it's also just like when there when there's like a parents will know what I'm talking about when there's like maybe more than like 20 seconds of silence, you're like, wait, something bad is about to happen because they always are silent before the the danger. It's never like if they're if they're giggling and laughing, it's like ah, oh, they're just fucking around. But when 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 the silence happens, it's like uh oh, I gotta jump into action here. So that'd be a fun Olympic sport to watch. What do you got, memes? Mowing the lawn. Ooh, yep. yep. That would be great. That would be great. That would be a great one. They probably have that. Yeah, they probably do. Something. In like Iowa. Yeah. Why yeah. Iowa? I don't know. They just John Deere uh, tournament. Sounds a little anti Iowa. Yeah. No, me. I think I think if you had someone from Iowa here, they'd be like, Yeah, mowing the lawn kicks ass. Yeah. It's Let's look at our up. favorite things. It's to do. all I have to look forward to yeah. in my bleak Iowan life. Assembling furniture and moving. Okay, okay. moving a couch, maybe. Yeah. Moving a couch in a hallway would be a great one. Like oh my obstacles. god. That, that should have be been the number great, one. Yeah, pick. yeah. Yeah. Moving a couch in a in a narrow hallway. Because you want to know why it'd be great is everyone thinks they can figure it out. Yep. Yep. Then you never can. I like assembling furniture too, like yeah, yeah. from IKEA. Yeah, I, I had to help someone move this weekend. No, I had was brutal. I had a leather couch that I moved from Connecticut to LA, and it I sat in the garage for a year, and some other thing got delivered. And the guy's like, "What's up with that?" I go, "It doesn't fit." He goes, "I'll get it to fit." I go, "It's not gonna fit." He goes, "It's not gonna fit." We had movers here. They tried different angles. It doesn't fit. I have to have it craned in if I'm ever gonna do it. He's like, "I'll get it to fit." I go, "Look, if you can get it up there, I'll give you an extra hundred bucks." I was like, but I don't want to have to pay a thousand to repair all the sheetrock that you're gonna fuck up. He's like, I got it, I got it. And him and his buddy, they sat there, they fucking smashed it into my walls, and they're like, yeah, it's not gonna fit. <laughs> oh, I just thought of a good I gotta one. like that though. But that'd be a great. I'd watch the beginning, like <laughs> you know how great it would be to intro in the two guys. Yeah. Like they think it always fits. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I just thought of a good one. We should have done shaving. Yeah, just like you're not. Everybody has like a beard. And then you, you're given five minutes. It's like, turn this into something. Yeah. Yeah. On your own face. I like that. And there could be like a minimum swipe, like goal, like fastest lap. Yep. 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 How many? Yeah. What are you going to say, Billy? From the old Trojan commercial, Sex Olympics. Oh. Are you talking about porn? You got a, you got a porn problem? You Wait, no, that was a porn? Tro- Wait, what? The, there was a Trojan commercial. Uh-huh. If you guys remember, there was a this whole campaign when, I know that it's the, the, when there was an Olympics. Long. That was people would watch that yeah you, anyway, you, you, people would you're watch also talking about sex. you're also talking about porn yeah wait it's, yeah so <laughs> i'm not it's why Olympics. is it different than porn yeah, yeah. Tell like us, what we need you you're the, you're the ath- uber for porn no no it's the <laughs> athletic like achievement like you know not the because it's not for like visual it's like the performance based like speed endurance strength so you're it's just it's porn <laughs> no, no it's porn with no, just different times it's like dancing versus sports One's a performance. So you're talking about new sports. dancing, but with penetration. Yeah. And so you're talking about porn. really fast porn. No. Just the best. I think you're talking about the best porn that you've sports. ever seen. Yeah. yeah. No, but like, I, like. What some, would it be? Like, <laughs> yeah, walk, yeah. Paint, paint, paint a picture yeah. of, you know. Pitch it. Yeah. Give me a- loads? Longest load? Yeah. Homie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could be one. Uh, deepest throat. Yeah. Biggest tits? Well, no, more more like athletic competition. Like accuracy, okay. hitting the correct Endurance. hole. Endurance. Wettest foot job. Speed. <laughs> no, Billy, walk me through. Like, paint me a picture. What am I looking at on the volume. screen? Volume. Uh, volume. <laughs> what? Volume. Just, of- pretty sure all this is out there. <laughs> yeah, this find. is porn. Yeah. No, but like, I want to see like, like strongman competitions, like our feats of strength. I want to see that. How many times someone can have yeah. sex? I don't know. It's just it was. In like a they have that the too. Yeah. So, so, so Billy, it's a Tiger Woods biopic. Like who who wins? Who who can make the other person uh, finish first? <laughs> oh, so it's, it's head to head. Yeah. So you yeah, yeah. okay. No, all right, now I'm into this. So so you win if the other person comes, comes first. first. Yeah. yeah. But you lose if you. <laughs> I think you okay. just made that part up. Yeah. Though, kind of, yeah. yeah. Save I, himself. <laughs> I'm into that. Okay. <laughs> who like who wins? So okay. who, who's your goat, Billy? 
Johnny Sids. Yeah. Nancy Reagan. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, Jake, you, got, you did you have something else? Say bed making. Bed making. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would suck. Yeah. I've but. seen some of those videos where they like yeah, they throw everything it. up, and yeah. I'm like, "That's amazing," but I'm never. No. I'm never going to get there. Yeah, no. Jake is an excellent bed maker. Putting, yeah. That putting was a, an outlier. No, it, so Jake stayed over at my place, and he made the bed up so nicely. I thought that that was the wrong bedroom. I was like, there's no chance Jake slept in here. It was better than any hotel bedroom I've ever seen. Dude, when you stay at somebody's place and you make the bed, that's when you're growing up. Yeah. Or that's when that's means you're, raised, well, you're raised a Jake, certain way. Yeah, Jake is always – Jake was yeah. making the bed when he was seven. But that's, no. that's something yeah. – no. I think when I was like 38 the first time I did it. Yeah. And when I did but it, I was like, this. you know what? Things are really – we're still those figuring it out. Is it your, uh, your boy Field Yates? He makes the bed in a hotel room every day? That I don't know. Yeah. I've never slept with him. <laughs> you lost. <laughs> I mean, I think the maids would Great like that less. <laughs> he is – I'm at Field Yates. <laughs> He's got some game to him. Yeah. Field Yates would definitely be in my Olympics for sex yeah. watching. Dan would Lobster. you watch Field Yates fuck Billy? <laughs> you know, I was just referencing the commercial. Yeah. But you would, right? It's a right? funny series. Say you would. Question. Say you'd watch him YouTube. fuck. You'd watch him fuck. Is... Field Yates? <laughs> I can't wait until he hears <laughs> He's this. this. <laughs> He's like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, numbers. Right. Let's finish the show. One to ten, how good of a hookup do you think Field Yates is? <laughs> Let me just Billy, a ser- ten out of serious ten. question. Out of everybody in this room right now, if you were to like walk past a window and see them having sex, which one would you stop and watch? <laughs> you can only pick one. Oh, I think Dude. he knows he'd pick me. He just doesn't want to say it. Yeah, no, he definitely. Yeah. He'd want to see the back muscles working and everything. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> was that who you were going to pick? But you didn't want to no, say it? I was going to pick memes. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. Okay. Yeah. Memes. Yeah, a little curveball. Nice yeah. memes. All right, uh, numbers. <laughs> Jokes. Ryan, go ahead. You get the first pick. Oh, uh, from scale of one to what again? One to 100. Uh, let's go 77. 58 is out. 91. 66. 11. Jake was 26. Hank has never won this, by the way. Never won this, Hank. What happens when you win? Nothing. You just get. We all are win. like, wait, did you really pick that number? <laughs> it's like names. We don't remember. Uh, what do we got? Is it just two? Is it a raw two? Wow, memes. Moses Malone. Reach Sorry, packed. memes. Memes always picks three. That's Reach tough. Packed. Brutal. Love you guys. You guys got to come up with something. If you, you don't have anything, you've been doing this the whole time, and you know, literally, I've, I've won the most. It's <laughs> very no, you good. haven't. Yeah, I have. Is that true, Jake? Yeah. I've won three times. Ooh, oh, I'm pretty wow. sure I've won. Oh, pretty sure. Uh, uh, I've, I've totally won, sure. I, I think we're tied then. Because <laughs> I won changed. three. 69's hit three times. Yes, that's a, that's but a, I think you're away for sex. one of them. <laughs> Billy picks it every time. No, 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 guys are around the 16 year old, you're just like. Because I hit 18 three times, and then you like guys told me to win it with a different smoke team. Smoke cigarettes? He just his favorite number, 69. Six, yeah, I, I was there times. for all of Is it still cool to tell 69 jokes if you're like. I was there for all of 69's hits. So if you're like 69, we can't make 69 jokes anymore. Billy has the most? No, I don't. I don't. He says so. I don't think he's for all. Like the guy that gets 69 softball jerseys. I'm going to bring up for one of them. The first one was the first one. actually happens in Big Cat. Lot, no, when somebody first... makes us a jersey, they'll make us a 69 jersey. Yeah. And they're like, what? We, we don't tell 69 <laughs> jokes anymore. The yeah. first one was the first hit ever. The second one was coming back from uh, suspension the first time. <laughs> yeah. Third, third I time noticed you mentioned was come again. over Zoom. <laughs> or no, the third time... Oh. Oh, I was there. I have oh, the dates. Oh, I have the dates. Yeah. Okay. Well. Oh my God. A- Jake's got the spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. You do well, not want to argue one, with the guy who has it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw that. Then it actually hit back to back, July eighth and July eleventh of what twenty twenty one. I feel like that was. I think he right after the graduation. He was on, no, I was. I think back. you were on suspension. In no, July I was. 8th. I was back after I July fourth. I was. Think so. I was gone for June. I remember one time he hit it and it was awkward because you guys got mad at him and you didn't celebrate. Yeah, there was that awkward time, and then I hit it. Like, so he's right definitely after. hit it twice. Okay. I don't know about the third. I've you've hit, hit it three it times? all four times. I've hit it three, three times. times. His 18s hit it four times, but after I won 18 on the third, you're like, win it with a different team. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Move on. You're so a system started, player. Yeah, I started. And how what's up with 18? Is 18 this like is my lucky number? Yeah. Okay, but I mean, it's maybe there's some it's weight distribution times. in that. Yeah, if it's no, that would be all we know is Hank has never won. That would be 52 nine times. It's the Nine best. times. <laughs> yeah, 52, one, right, one. So Billy and Jake are tied for three, and Hank is, still has zero. Billy's saying he has four. Uh, no, I, it's three. I got that wrong. You I, said I you weren't. Good accountability. Yeah. I don't know but then you did say times. pretty sure, not totally sure. That's, so true. That's, true. Yeah. Um, That's true. How much you bench these days? 
Uh, this is all over, by the way. We're, we're just talking cut all yeah. this. Oh, um, you know, I just, I, I just try to see if I get three fifteen a couple times. Yeah, just toss it around. MK six seven seven. What do you mean? I'm just wondering. I'm surprised you ever talked to me about benching. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even that in. <laughs> um, crocodiles have a hard bite force down, but are actually very weak at opening their mouths. Love That's you guys. That's why you Changing can the hold subject. their <laughs> Love you guys. mouths together. All right, now we're really done.